okay we are live hey you guys you know what i'm looking at the chat box on my screen and they and trish they've been cutting up in here before we got on live <laughs> hi everybody oh my god hey you guys listen trish is back yay hey, I'm so happy to be back you guys hey brie yep brie hey brie hey team hey Wait a minute, you kind of faded out there, Bree. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. Hey, everybody. Hey. <sighs> okay. And Keisha being late, I think she's trying to play catch up after getting off work. So she's catching up on the last little bit of both of the shows, okay? Okay. All right. So I apologize, you guys in the chat. I know it looks confusing, but I played the wrong intro. <laughs> I played the old intro, and I bet you guys are like, wait a minute. I thought she was Soap Corner Talk, not CBS Soap Dish Recap. I'm sorry I pushed the wrong button on my panel, and it pushed the old intro. So, just to let you know, nothing has switched back. So, yes, Vicky, it is showtime, because we got a lot to talk about this week. Woo, child. <laughs> Yeah, I'm telling you, you would think that February sweep should have been in March. So, March madness. We had our own dose. All right, you know. All right, so let me do our formal introduction, and then we'll go ahead and get started. So, welcome, you guys, to Soap Corner Talk, where it's myself, T. We got Bree on deck. We got Trish back. And Key should be popping in shortly once she's done catching up with one of the shows. And this is where we recap both the Young and the Restless and the Bold and the Beautiful this week for March 25th through March 29th. And we usually recap the Young and the Restless in the first half of the show, the Bold and the Beautiful in the second half of the show. And then we have our Flip the Script segment, who's taking several seats. And Trish, I don't think you were here when we did uh, Who Gets Our our um, Star of the Week, and then the Pickle of the Week. The Pickle, okay. We did the Star a while back, too, I remember. But the Pickle is... Okay. Yeah, That's somebody, sour. you know, something just sour. It was like, oh my God, it was, you know, not good. Pickle of the Week. Okay. Yep. That sounds fun. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What'd you say, uh, Bree? There's a lot of pickles this week. Oh, my goodness, girl. Tell me There's about it. Some kosher, some dill, some sweet, and <laughs> bread and butter. <laughs> Wait a minute. Black Pink, me see, Black Pink Me said, let's go. I'm hot as fish grease. <laughs> Woo! Ready to hold <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh okay so you know we got to do young and the restless first so i don't know which one you hot about whether it's you sure it's not y and r or is you waiting for bold and beautiful all right let's go ahead and get this summary out the way and i gotta say even though we have four days off from uh march madness last week i'm telling you they came back with a bang this week big time uh, shows. Yeah, both shows. Okay. So, for the uh, Young and the Restless, for the week of March 25th through 29th, Jordan is alive. Lily and Devon consider firing Heather and Daniel. And Phyllis, hold on, let me switch my screen. Okay. And Phyllis pulls a fire alarm and, oh, a fire alarm to ruin Danny and Christine's romance. Sally gives Adam tough love. Christine accuses Phyllis of being mischievous. Phyllis decides to move on. And Ashley Alter confuses Jack. Um, dismissing Billy's concerns, Lily terminates Daniel and Heather. And Chelsea convinces Adam to send Connor away. Uh, Nikki learns Jordan has escaped. Diane and Kyle argue before Claire makes an accusation against Kyle. And then last but not least, Nick con uh, Nick comforts Adam. Victor warns, I mean, Victor wants to whisk Nikki away. For, 
and Tucker tells Jack Ashley is falling apart. I tell you, we got a lot of moving parts for the young and the restless. Oh, my goodness. Where do you guys want to start? God, so many characters, y'all. <laughs> there was like almost everybody was on tap, right? Yeah, that's why I actually have, usually I have like six to seven photos for the storylines for the week. I had to do nine for Young and the Restless this week. It's a collage. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, thank you. I actually have an app that, you know, will allow you to creatively set it up in a certain type of manner, you know, so. All right. So where do you guys want to start? Uh, Trish? Oh, my gosh. I guess you're welcome question. back. Uh, how about, okay, well, since it's a welcome back for me, how about Lily's welcome back? And the whole firing situation, because you guys, I thought she was being all mature one day saying, you know, that wouldn't really be professional. And then it was like the very next scene that she's in, she's making up her mind to fire him. I was like, what? That's the biggest, fastest flip-flop I've ever seen. Okay, so we said this on, Brie, you was on, on with me on Wednesday, right? Mm -hmm. On Wednesday. We've been waiting for you to come back on this one. Trish, because we know that you tend to deal with a lot of corporate stuff. I mean, even in a right to work state, because there was a relationship with a person that is not your peer or an owner in the company, this is all the wrong. Okay, that's what we thought. <laughs> this is everything not to do is what you see people do in business on this show. Don't ever do it. You will either be fired yourself or you will go to jail. <laughs> And that is Trishy. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Don't do Listen, these uh, oh, Breeze. Oh my gosh, it's like they wrote a book called "You Know uh, What I Learned to Do in Business," and you open it, and every page is just a blank page. <laughs> well, Breeze, Breeze suggested that maybe you should have a segment called Trishues. I uh, see. Yes, I actually talked about what that with you guys doing a. Um, doing a uh, blog called Trishues. Uh, oh. about, I guess it was about like a year ago. Um, I told you all about it. Yeah, and I haven't done it yet. And I should definitely do that because it would really be, we could have some fun. I know, I know. Yeah, I mean, okay, so like you said, she originally said, no, maybe I should just take the high road. I mean, Omega Sphere is doing extremely well. And then at the same time, Heather is a good attorney. I could be petty, but maybe not. And then, like you say, the next day, she really got in her feelings. She did get in her feelings. And, and it was not the feelings of Lily the Forgiver and the High Road Taker, <laughs> which was kind of fun. <laughs> but, I also want to put blame. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say what you got, Brie. I was going to say, I want to put blame also on Devon. He is part owner of that company and he's enabling her to make an unethical decision once oh, again based off of emotion because that's all he does exactly yeah it's you know it's a good thing they didn't go public yeah i'm glad for that too and my thing is with devon like if, if people are deserving of being of, of being fired for cheating then what what's your excuse and why is your cheat dress now on the board too <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> what you said a person that you cheated with is now on the board as well and then abby had the nerve to say oh yeah they should be fired right i couldn't believe when she opened her mouth and those words fell out of it i'm like really abby <laughs> well, really so, together. exactly um oh what else was i gonna say Oh, okay. And then the other thing is, is everything after she decided to just deal with this whole situation emotionally, Devon and Lily had that conversation away from Jill, away from Billy, you know, other people that was involved at that same leadership level that affects the entire company and wasn't going to tell him. I mean, Billy had to drag it out of them. You know, until he start, kept asking questions and found out that, you know, Daniel cheated and is now with Heather. And he was like, you know what, I'm sorry that that happened to you. And then he said, again, of course, speaking about himself. And then he turns around and say, but he said, I don't think this is a good idea. 
because it could be a lot of ramifications for the company. And then that's when Devon, his thinking cap switched on. And he was you like... see how bright that room got? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, so I don't know. I'm wondering if there's going to be some fallout from this. Now, moving to Daniel and Heather... They try to take accountability amongst themselves. Why don't we just quit? We shouldn't, you know. I, I if she, you know, she do fire me. I'm not going to sue. What do you think about all that, you guys? I mean, my question to that. Okay, if, if you guys quit your jobs, okay, what does that prove? Like, if, if like Lily, I mean. She's still going to be upset. I mean, in her personal life, she's still upset with you guys. So you guys quitting is really not going to do anything. Plus, Daniel put a lot of time and effort building Omega Sphere. Why would he want to just leave the thing that, that, that was his creation? And for Heather, Heather is a lawyer. Plus, she had a whole um, law firm in a whole other country. She could start a whole law firm in Genoa City. She probably wasn't even worried about that. But... I uh, I don't know if it's to ease their conscience because of their guilt or if they feel that it would help Lily move on. I'm just curious to know why they, they felt quitting would be the best move to go. I'm thinking it was because, because Lily's biggest issue is having running into them at work, which is why Devon was recommending to Abby let them work from home instead of letting them go. She just don't want to run into them. And it's like, and then she talking about when she said to Billy, oh, well, what about other employees? They're going to see them together and they're going to start talking. It's going to create a uncomfortable working environment. Yeah, for you. Ain't nobody going to be paying attention eyes. to them. I rolled my eyes to that. I'm like, the, the whole entire chance for winners is total dysfunction. Everybody's exes are cheaters and exes are cheaters and cheaters and side chicks and everything. So <laughs> <laughs> everybody oh, is mixing man. and mingling. Yeah. And yeah. they still so much. I mean, she was just with Billy. Right. Yep. And she about to lose her position to Billy. Yeah. yeah the hypocrisy just does not ever cease to amaze me. No. I totally agree with you on it's that one. It's just fantastic, isn't it? Could you imagine in real life pulling this guy? Well, I mean, people have done it. It's, but you it's know, crazy. the other part, she tried to throw shade at Billy by saying, oh, why do we have to listen to him? Look at his past. And I'm like, uh, sweetheart, you technically are an ex-felon. So... Literally took a life. Correct. So while you trying to throw shade at Billy, yeah. I think you need to dial and rim that back and went in. Yeah, have that pickle while you go take a seat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Trish, she is back in rare form. Back in action. <laughs> she said, go, would you say that again, Trish, for everybody in the back can hear you? Go get your pickle and sit down and eat it while you take a seat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, my it's god so fun to talk trash about people that aren't real isn't it i know gosh i just love it listen i've been talking hey i've been talking trash about hope all week in some places it got me blocked so oh, that is so funny i got kicked off a page a couple weeks ago because somebody said something negative and i was like well why are you here? Because they were like literally bashing the whole show, saying something, something. I hope it gets canceled. And I said, "Well, then why are you here?" And then they just attacked me. How dare you come on this page and ask me why? I'm like, "Well, I'm trying to figure out why you want the show canceled. If you're a fan, why do you want it canceled?" And then they they split into me again, and then they blocked me. <laughs> were you talking to Devon? Listen, it was so funny. I was I was actually on a dope thread on on Twitter, which is now X, and somebody 
you know, said something about hope and I, you know, I, it wasn't out of the way. I didn't use any derogatory terms, no curse words, no nothing toward the owner of the page, just responding to the fact that I didn't like how hope moved. And the next thing I said, you have been blocked. <laughs> Oh my God! And Hope took nothing but L. She lived up to the first letter of her last name. Took nothing but L's every episode. Oh girl, listen, we gonna have her for dinner later. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. because she was all over the place. She showed that. Yeah, mm -hmm. she didn't stand on business with Thomas, but we'll get there. Yeah. Um. Okay, but yeah, back to Lily throwing shade at Billy. It's like, girl, stop it. Just stop it. Then she turned around and became even more unprofessional and decided to fire them openly in a coffee house. Can you imagine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were supposed to meet up with her. They actually had a scheduled appointment in the office. And she was like, you know what? We don't even have to meet up in the, in the office. I'm just going to fire you right here while I hold a cup of caramel macchiato. <laughs> <laughs> sip, sip, pass. <laughs> I mean, that's embarrassing because, you know, you standing up in the middle of a coffee house, people are around you and they're like, ooh, they just got fired. The only reason anyone should ever get fired in a coffee house is if they work in the coffee house. Yes, exactly. Like Sharon would fire Esther, but I think she would take her in the back room or something. I know where she's been unpacking boxes in the back the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> she's been taking care of that inventory control. Oh my gosh. Girl, my inventory is the same coffee, the same Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm just curious to see what happens next. We really didn't get that much after because that happened like on Tuesday or Wednesday. Because didn't we talk about that on Wednesday, Bree? Yes, we did. Yeah. We combined her with Thomas on Wednesday. So she, you know, I'm curious to find out because we didn't see anything else past Wednesday with. The Lily, Daniel, and Heather storyline. So I'm wondering what's going to happen next with that. What is Jill going to think about that? Does she even know? That's a great question. I don't know. I mean, I because. I imagine she's going to be happy. And then he's the, like you said, Bree, he's, this is his brainchild. He's the head of the gaming division. I mean, and I'm, honestly, oh, they're going to keep his product because obviously Chancellor Winter owns it, which, I, you know, that sucks because he created that out of his own pain. All of that, that whole game that Lucy's in and uh, I think Phyllis is in that game as well. Those are, I didn't hear you. What you say? It's his life story. It's his life story. I mean, how are you just going to hire somebody in to say, hey, take off with somebody else's life story? They're not going to know how that, how, you know, how the progression of their life and their mental health, you know, went over a certain period of time. And you're just going to say, hey, you're out. Let somebody take it over because I'm mad because you cheated. If they can find a way to monetize it, they, they won't care. Yeah. That's true. Yes, it's a lot of corporations. And uh, what I was saying on Wednesday, and I think this actually could happen. I think Lily is petty enough to put Phyllis in Daniel's position. Mm. You think so? That would be that would be a, that would be great. So. I mean, it could be possible. I didn't see anything in the spoilers for next week on that. I did see something else for Lily next week. But um, <laughs> that uh, my crew has been rooting for for a very long time. I'm excited. I oh, can't yeah. wait. I'm happy. I'm thrilled. This needs to happen. This is 28 years overdue. Thank you, guys. Thank the writers. Finally. What'd you say, Finally. Trish? You was like, what do you, you know what we're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fun. okay. Let's see what happens. Shake it up. Bring her person. Let's, let's get some personality. Come on, let's go. I mean, 
that's mean, fun. yeah, that's going to be, I, I know it wasn't, you know, I, I, I could take it or leave it, but I know you guys are excited about it. <laughs> I mean, I've just always been a Lily fan. I've always been a Nick fan. And I know it was actually you guys that put the idea of them being together. Because, I, I mean, they just always were kind of like 180 degrees around each other, you know. But, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm here for it. I, I'll, I'm, I'll buy into it until I, until I don't like it. Okay, because people are now asking what the heck are we talking about. So I'm going to give you guys a spoiler alert. Uh, the April 5th episode... Um, is telling us that Nicholas and Lily are going to reconnect. So, we did see a... T what was that? That was a chem test done back around uh, the the anniversary bash last year. Remember? Uh -huh. yep. They chem tested those two and then they just left it alone. Because at this point, she was now moving on when they brought Daniel in. Well, now Daniel's with Heather. She's single and now that Sally's back with Adam, Nicholas is now single. And so, there you go. So, it looked like they're going to try to connect those two together. And, um... Oh, that would be the beautiful couple. Yeah, see, they in the comments sack talk about, let's go. <laughs> they excited. That's true, let's go. <laughs> I, I feel like the writers and the producers actually listen to us. We've been campaigning. Uh, Keisha's been really campaigning. For sure she has. I'd like to think they listen. Yeah. And I think they do listen because, keep in mind, uh, Brooke and Rich still hasn't had a wedding. And we've been preaching and asking for them not to give us that. That's your listening. <laughs> exactly. That is true. We have. Yes, we have. Like, no, we don't need to see that. Go to City Hall and come back and say, yay, we're married. Okay, cool. Bye. Yep. But, um, oh, girl, this week, bold next week. Oh, my goodness. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. So, I think we might just get folk. We might. Mm hmm. Isn't that just sick? I thought we were going to not have another, another double diddler. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, y'all know yes. what I'm saying. I know what you're saying. Trish, you are <laughs> crazy. How many times do we have to cross pollinate? Yeah, I know. Well, oh. on, yeah, we, I, I don't know. We might need two hours for both. <laughs> right? Oh my gosh, I know. And we almost skipped right over the entire rest of the Young and the Restless. Right, <laughs> I, even though we got a lot. <laughs> Even though we got a lot to cover on the Young and the Restless. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. I think we covered everything on the Lily side. Like I say, I'm kind of curious to find out um, what, you know, Jill is going to say about all of this, you know. And then where does that leave Heather and Daniel? Because I know part of the spoiler for next week is that they're trying to figure out how to handle this new normal. So... It's like, okay, what are you going to do with those two? You broke up Daniel and Lily. You put him back with Heather. So now what? Right. And I'm like, this woman closed up her whole law firm from another country. She, I would assume that she can just start something up. Or there's no lawyer. Well, there's Michael, but he works underneath Victor. So there's really no lawyer in Genoa City. Um, she could be the DA because we don't know what Christine's doing. She's going to be on tour with Danny, I guess. Mm -hmm. So there's options for her. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I, I just, I'm wondering if they just going to send them off into the sunset. I mean, without a job. where I mean, where's Daniel going to go? Omega Sphere is owned by... Chancellor Winters, what are you going to do now? They need to sue. I think so. I, I wouldn't mind a legal battle. I, I think Heather is bold enough to say, we're going to sue. Because I, th uh, I think you mentioned on Wednesday that uh, she looked over the contracts mm -hmm. just, you know, just to cover herself. But they could probably get more than what a megasphere is worth. So I, I, I probably wouldn't put it past Heather to go after them. Plus, Billy also hinted at that, that they could do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, one more other thing about Lily. She she was acting really devastated, and I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, what Daniel did was right, but was it a little bit over the top, and their relationship wasn't, like, deep yeah, to me? Right, yep, yep, yep. 
I mean, and, and y'all know I was I'm, I was a Daniel and Lily fan, and then Heather came back, and I can't help it. I did flip, um, but you know, yeah, she they were say. not. Yeah, I did. I totally. They were not talking about how in love they were. They were just enjoying each other's company. Right. And she made it look like the ultimate betrayal. And and then we can't when we kinda of talked about this, you missed this last week, uh, Trish. The fact that she knew what was going on and she didn't say anything. I think Bree called it being passive aggressive, right, Bree? Yeah. I yeah. would agree with that. You yeah. know, I mean she and then after it happened, then she said, I knew it, I saw it, I saw it all, I knew it from the beginning. Okay, then why didn't you say anything? Then why didn't you yeah, why would you allow yourself to stay in a situation when you absolutely are looking down the road and you can see the headlights coming right for you? Exactly. Why are you going to stay there? Exactly. I totally agree right. with that. You know, right. so I just think it's overkill. I mean, if they want to break up those two, obviously that's fine, but... I mean, the overdramatic of emotion and the betrayal and the pettiness and all of that for a guy that you were just kicking it with. It, it, it all they did was share a key. And that, that, that's really the, the most that their relationship has peaked. You would have thought she was hope losing out on, on a Thomas's peen. You would have thought that she was... <laughs> Hey, can we? Right, can we not also forget about the fact that Devon tried to put him on notice saying, you know, don't have regrets and want to get back with Lily. He was like, oh no, I don't regret anything. I need to be right where I'm supposed to be. And I'm like, well, there you go. (laughs) Well, and I mean, to me, you know, yeah, I get it. Lily's your sister and everything, but man, Devon, you got some nerve. Right. I mean, you got nerve from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet because well, all that stuff you were spewing, mm-hmm. you, you you wouldn't have stood there and taken it Mm-mm. after what you did. Mm-mm. Yep. If he had nerve, he wouldn't leave with emotion so much. Exactly. Yeah, I, yeah, I, and I got to give it to Over Billy emotion. when Billy told Devon, "You're enabling this." Yeah. I was like, oh, that was a good one. I mean, normally Billy is off, you know, his... Don't you love it when he's mature? Yes. This this whole conversation he had at that table with the two of them, he looked like the better business person than they did. He was the grown-up in the room that time. And it just sucks because, I mean, you know, yep. poor... Uh, yeah, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. We should say something, Bree. No, I was going to say hell froze, freezes over. Billy is the rational one. In, in the, the room, room. exactly. Well, the broken <laughs> clock is right twice a day. So. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Um, let's get let's talk about quickly this story with Connor, Devon, Devon, Cl- Connor, um, Chelsea, and Adam. And I know last week Trish. Um, uh, Keish and Bree and I, we were saying that, you know, why can't they just find, with all the money that this family has, can they just bring somebody closer to home to work with him instead of send that boy off to Maryland? Get a big house and just all reside together in it right where you are in Genoa City and bring in a live-in therapist. Wow. You're, you're literally the son of a billionaire. Maybe you didn't get your half of a hundred a half a billion in the lawsuit because you didn't participate, but you have millions and you have access to millions more. I'm with you, man. I don't know why you got to go out of town. Well, and and Adam was pushing that too, even this week, but Chelsea was like, no, 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 check out the place, check out this, check out that, you know, and I'm like, 
But y'all got money. Exactly. Money <laughs> opened doors. Money is a tool for certain yeah. things. Yeah. And I mean, if you think about it in the real world, um, the people who are the billionaire types, you and most of the time until they write a tell-all book or something like that, you have no idea what's going on behind those closed doors or what doctors and nurses they have coming in and out or if they have a live-in or someone on call. They do. Of course they do. Yeah. What you got, Bree? It was really upsetting that when they were at the coffee shop and mm -hmm. that boy was saying, I don't even feel like I should be here. And they're still trying to convince this boy to go all the way to Maryland by himself and say you're going to visit him on weekends. Right. But like, that's Chelsea, I don't understand why Adam didn't push harder. You know, it's just, and I get it, they're trying to be on the same page, but it was, this is her, this is her talking. Adam decided to just go along with it. He don't want that boy to leave. But I think he, didn't he say something about being worried about Chelsea and her mental state and how she's dealing with all of this too? And he didn't want to, what's that? No, I'm listening, I'm drinking water, go ahead. Was it, no, I mean, didn't didn't he say that to Nick that he was worried about Chelsea? I think he did. And Nick said, "Isn't Billy there?" And he's like, "Let go wrong, you know." Right. Um, because he he was pointing out that you know that was I thought that was part of the conversation was that was why they were doing this is because Chelsea really didn't think it was the right thing and he was worried about her and didn't want to like rock stuff. So is it going to be harder for her? Wait a minute. She's going through something. I would, If I'm going through something mentally about my kid, I'm not going to send him away because that's going to make it worse for me too. Because I'm like, is he okay? What yeah, is he doing? You know? Could not imagine. That's why I was like, if she's having issues right now, who's going to make the, the end goal decision here? You know what I mean? And I just, I, you know, I know it's a storyline, but to send that boy all the way to Maryland. Mm -hmm. when, and then said he's going to be this, they're going to visit every weekend. He's not a college kid. Right. This is not, this is not jail. Like what, what? So you guys have, you have no problem hopping on a plane every weekend and you guys might as well be there where he's at. Get mm -hmm. a condo down the street. I mean, what you've got money. Like, I don't understand. Yeah. Victor, if they say, well, we can't do that, I can guarantee you, ask Victor. He'll pull some strings to get somebody in there. Right. It would be nothing. He loves having people sit at the ranch. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but but my, my issue is, if Chelsea is the main one driving home about this treatment, why does she live in Maryland so she can monitor everything for yeah. her son each day versus going into a panic attack at Crimson Lights while her son's in a whole other state. And she had a whole opportunity to be with her child. Right. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. I just, this here, it was breaking my heart and she continued to fuss with And Adam is like, look. He don't want to go. You see how happy he is when he was upstairs. I know he was trying to do the thing with his room. But he is. He wants to be with us. He want to be with his parents. <sighs> yeah, it was heartbreaking to watch. And then they finally convinced him to go when you know that boy don't want to be there. No. And imagine the confusion as a child to all the things he's thinking, you know, there's all this stuff wrong with me and I'm the problem and they want me to go away. And, you know, you would have all of those thoughts and it would just be such a, such a soul crushing experience. Okay. And go ahead. I'm as, sorry. I was going to say, as soon as that boy said he felt like he didn't want to be here, yeah. him, the state was never an option. That's mm -hmm. completely off the table. Yeah, Veronica in the comment section says that Connor was fine until he was bullied at school regarding his parents. Adam and Chelsea and Connor need to stay at home and help him. Yep. Um, Amaya, yeah, we understand that they're probably trying to take Judah Mackey off screen, but this is part of Soap Talk conversation, okay? Because she's telling us don't overthink it. 
This is part of the conversation. Wait, what they get everything. What? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. This is all in good soap fun and good talk. That's We're it. Deep in thought. We are so, so deep in thought. <laughs> These people are our friends. They're in our living rooms every single day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. So I guess, you know, um Monday episode is going to be two very interesting moments. First with Adam and Victor and Adam and Victoria. But yeah, you got to, I, I, a moment, especially that moment between Adam and Victoria, I have never seen that as of the time. They're always sniping at each other. Well, they do have a little bit of a moment, and it was it was very nice to see between the two of them. So look out for that on Monday. Yep. All right. Next up. We have Phyllis and the fire alarm. Phyllis, 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 Phyllis. First of all, isn't that a felony? Yep. Are you not on probation? Yep. Did Danny not make himself clear? Yep. <laughs> oh, have some pride, have some dignity, make it stop. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I hate that they got this material for her. Now, I know oh. she... She is sneaky and conniving, but let her do some stuff in the corporate world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A hacker or something like that. But just pulling fire alarms because you couldn't get the guy. Yeah, I, I'm like, come on. They got to do better than that for Michelle. Oh, just beneath her to do that, that kind of thing. Oh, Keisha's in the building. Keisha. Hey, Keisha. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Did you catch? Did you catch up? Yeah. Okay. So right quick, I don't know if you, cause um, we talked about um, we we talked about Lily in that situation with the firing, and then we talked about uh the situation with Connor. You got any quick remarks? If you want to say something. Uh, no, you, you guys can keep going. Okay. Just you want make sure you want to get your two cents in. Okay, well, we, we're currently on Phyllis and the Fire Alarm. <laughs> oh, man. She's an overly grown child with a grandchild. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the thing is, is Danny even worth all of this? It was, no. We just seen that he, they were in, Christine and Christine were in slow motion. I'm not sure. <laughs> Me personally, I'm not doing felonies for him, but what whatever it is, whatever it is, I guess. I'm trying to understand, does she does she truly think that she still has a chance with Danny, or is she just trying to ruin what, her, uh, give him and Christine a hard time? Because I, I can't really tell, because when they were in that lobby after she pulled the fire alarm, mm -hmm. it was almost as if she still, she's still thinking that there's some kind of chance for the two of them. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't get it. I agree. I mean, he's made it perfectly clear. You caught the two of them half undressed. You right. were at the door listening. For a moment, did it seem kind of weird like she was enjoying what she was listening? It was odd. <laughs> that was, I was doing a limb. It was creepy. Yeah, yeah that was kind of cringy. I'm like, Phyllis, what are you doing? You getting what off you on doing? listening to them? Hey, it's been a while. It's been a while. I mean, well, come on. <laughs> Y'all, I swear, years ago, uh, my husband and I were on a trip, and we were in this hotel, and it was very, very old. It was in Europe. And um, all I could hear were sounds. And I'm like, I thought these walls were, like, super thick. And I'm hearing more and more sounds. And it's never ending. And I'm like, how is this happening? Like, where do you get that kind of energy? And it doesn't stop and it doesn't stop. And so there's a little balcony out, but it was really cold. It was in winter. And I decided I'm going to just go out on the balcony and get a breath of fresh air and maybe get a different noise. And I went out on the balcony and it was all the doves that were roosting on top of the building. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. Wow. All that noise. And I was like, I am so embarrassed. Where My mind was in the 
gutter. And all I can think is, where do you get that amount of energy? <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> oh, my God. It Trish. Yeah, Trish is back, Keish, in rare form. <laughs> Oh my goodness! But yeah, that was. Cr I'm like, is she listening to? She had her eyes closed. She was leaning across the door as if she was enjoying. I'm like, ew. Right. Yeah. Ew. And then she caught herself, and then she decided to pull that fire alarm. You know <laughs> what? The other thing is, before they, before uh, Danny came back after he left to go get a room. She's over there telling Christine that you're going to be seeing me. I'm going to be following him on tour. And I'm like, girl, stop. <laughs> just, so, just, so, just humiliating. Just humiliating. And y'all, I had to laugh so hard when Danny and Cricket wound up at the bottom of the stairs and Phyllis goes, oh, hey, guys. Oh, yeah, that's... oh my God, this is so bad. Yeah, and then the girl, what? She ended up cutting her finger or something. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why are you pointing the finger at yourself? Like, what? Like, it wasn't me, guys. Hi, how are you? It, it's, it's so bad. It's to, like, girl, why are you at the scene of the crime? You haven't learned from your 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 last crime. Don't be at the scene of the crime. Right. <laughs> it's just what I'm saying. It's just bad. I just think. For somebody like Michelle Stafford, I mean, I know it's a shortage of men and storylines on this show, but it's like, you got to give her something better than this. This is old and tired. Let Christine have Danny and let them ride off into the sunset on his tour. Yes. Peace out. You know, and hopefully, writers, you're listening. Since you listen to everything else we've been talking about here, yeah, take them off into the sunset. And we got to give you uh, credit, Keish. We were talking about uh, Nick and Lily earlier. We we're like, we thank the writers that they listened to you, and you finally pushed. For listen, <laughs> Keish been talking about this for what two years? It's been it's been longer than that. I, <laughs> whenever that that fantasy episode that alternate universe episode happened when those two were together that like that was the moment i started shipping them wow <laughs> and it didn't matter to me that they never really had any scenes before any storylines before i'm like they have got to make this happen one way or another and i never gave up the fight guys you didn't fight nope here. Hopefully. Well, here's the thing. They better make it good. I mean, they they dragged us on with Chance and Summer. And then we get no wet hair in the shower. You know. Uh, so, I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully, y'all will be happy with what they come up with. At this point, I'll take any type of... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we're going to... Yeah, we're going to... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. Count that. Count what? Are you talking about Danny and Christine? Uh, look, everything is in slow motion now, so I guess we have to count that for 2024. Listen. Everything I wonder, too, is that the camera slow motion, or were they just really moving that slow? I, I mean, they look awkward to me. It didn't look like... It was like they were... You can tell that they haven't done that in a while on screen. Yeah. It's kind of like, you go here, oh, whoa, wait, I'm sorry, me? No, you. No, me. Me, you, or you, me. What? Oh, left? No. Your left, my left. Yeah, I don't. Mm -mm. It was. Yeah. I mean, look like they put in a lot of energy into trying to create that scene, the music composition and everything. And I'm like, why? Why? You know, I mean, they could have gave us one of those half scenes where they just landed on the bed and we didn't see them anymore. So. Yeah. Honestly, leaving more to the imagination in some cases is probably a better idea. Yeah, I agree. It's no offense. It's just a matter of it, there's, there's a certain vibe in a character that makes things really hot and exciting and then other characters because they're more reserved and they're you know they're that character mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. ju it's just um 
There is no fire. I'm sorry. I said what I said. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, romance. To mm. a certain extent, but there, it's not earth-shattering fire. No, and I don't know what we're going to do now since there's going to, well, for the moment, there's no dope. So who's going to take that spot? Oh, that's he's Lily and Nick. RJ and Luna. RJ and Luna. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we all fast-forwarded because they're so young. <laughs> Sarcasm. Oh, I mean, oof. I, I Disney Channel. Disney, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So besides, um, of course, the cra- the the crazy antics of Phyllis, we got some other issues going on when it comes to Ashley. Mm-hmm. Is it two or three issues? Two. Three personalities? Because I noticed. I think it's two. Is it three? I noticed a younger teen type of thing. You've got nice Ashley, you've got dark side Ashley, and then you've got this teen who's sitting around eating popcorn with her hair in two ponytails. Binge watching TV. Binge on the phone. Q. Mm. I think you got 16. 16? Call 16 personalities. Oh, no. So it's Ash Sybil Lee. <laughs> <laughs> But my favorite personality is the one who was ragging on her daughter. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Listen, that's what they need to take them words and use over at Bo. Me, 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 me. Isn't that right, Hope? Go ahead. Oh, hey, Jay Money. Hey, Jay. Jay is in the chat. My moderator. Um... Yeah, I, I got to give it to Eileen Davison. She is hilarious. She's doing a great job because, man, whoo, wow. Yeah. Yeah. One, but, oh, yeah, you know what? There's that other personality, sultry, sexy, talking to Tucker, Ashley. So you got that well, one, huh? I guess I assumed that was like the the cynical person. Yeah, me too. Oh, you think so? Yeah. I, excuse me, I thought so too. Okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah, but she don't even. She it's gonna get worse next week for her because she's gonna be like losing time, not remembering where she was. Especially it starts on Monday. She's like, "How did I get here? I am lost." Yeah, and her family's not doing a thing for her. And it, my thing is, they are highly aware that. She's going through something. Why don't they hire a therapist or a psychologist to, you know, to evaluate her? Uh, I, I mean, instead of blaming Tucker, they are aware that their sister is going through something. And plus, she's had a past history. Right. So it's not too far-fetched. I agree. Yeah, Jack is getting on my nerve. As much times as he drop everything to run over to Nikki and meet up at AA meetings and everything... You need to put that same energy into what's going on with your sister. Mind your own. He was like, I'm done. I, I can't reason with her. I'm gone. But he has no problem picking up lunch, dropping everything at a drop of a hat. He's a whole CEO of a company and will go and be at Nikki's uh, bedside, with her side, wherever, wherever she's at. Mm-hmm. He has no problem being a, a, a superhero for her, but not for his sister. I think he's in denial. It seems like he's in denial for some reason, and I don't understand. I agree. It's like he wants this to be Tucker and not Ashley. Like, yeah. Because he hates Tucker so much, he just he wants mm-hmm. to think that Tucker is not being honest, and whatever is going on with Ashley is just based on her anger over what Tucker has done to her instead of just facing the truth and actually getting your sister some help. It's like he doesn't want to admit that she needs help. And I don't know why. Yeah, that, that's that thing. I mean, that whole argument in today's episode that Jack had with with Tucker. Tucker is being genuinely, at this point, he seems to be really concerned. And he went to, knowing that his family can't, knowing that her family can't stand him, he still decided to bite the bullet and say, look, Jack, 
I'm coming to you. Something going on with your sister. She's calling me, telling me we need to run Glissade together. And he's like, no, she didn't. You're lying. This is you trying to scheme. I'm like, are you serious, Jack? And you supposed to be like a sponsor for a person that's going through alcoholism. And you don't understand that your own sister got issues. You've seen them. He, I, I almost forgot what Glissade was. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you said glissade. I'm like, what is glissade? I'm like, that's like some cheap Windex or something. Girl. <laughs> company name ever. I mean, really? Yeah, I don't know where they got that name. Like you said, it does sound like a window cleaner or something. It's like it's like a great value. It's glissade compared to <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. The glass ought to be clean after you use it, but it probably will be street. Now I I I really I did really enjoy where Ashley was sitting on that couch binge watching sitcoms. It was so funny to watch. I mean, she looked so comfortable. She looked relaxed. She looked like she was enjoying herself. And Jack had to come and bother her. Right, like I'm sitting here laughing, and you're going to come accuse me of something. I'm minding my own business, not hurting anyone. All because. Which, yeah, she was watching TV. I mean, all because this is not what she normally does. Okay, I decided to watch sitcoms today. Is that a problem? What's it to you? I mean, she was acting a little out of character, though. Yeah, she was, but it was a little ridiculous for him to go on the attack. Yeah, I, that, that was weird. I was like, really, Jack? Look, she having a good time. She got her PJs on. She's sitting on the couch, busting up laughing. Let her have her fun for the moment. And she's not around Tucker. Right. right. He's <laughs> in the Abbott house. Exactly. Right. Well, but Jack's all stressed out about everything. So he's got to go harsh everybody's mellow. <sighs> yeah. Um, but you got to check out Ashley on Monday where she t calls Audra to her face. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. I can't <laughs> She said, I wonder which personality that is. Oh, no. Phil, Phil thank you. He said, yes, Ashley's a personality is the one, uh, the one that was ragging on Allie is his favorite. Is his well, I, I give you a heads up. <laughs> yes. I, I'm hoping it's that one. I'm praying it's that one. I oh, that my one. goodness. She needs that personality for the whole year. Because I want the entire Genoa City to feel that effect. I want her to rag on Phyllis brother everybody that would be so fun girl Victor, her ex husband everybody girl you talking about funny hold on i was trying to see if i can find that scene um but keep talking because i'm telling you it is so hilarious what she tell him i mean what um what she has to say about audra to her I'm trying to tell Jack. I mean, he's trying to tell him. Mm hmm. Yep. Which was surprising because I figured he would keep that to himself and try to be the hero on his own and say, like, well, the Abbots didn't do anything for her or something. But the fact I'm, that he included Jack, I'm, I'm glad he did because I. Because I feel like if he had kept it to himself and tried to do something to help her and. I don't know, some something random went mm -hmm. wrong or something like that. They would be on Tucker's neck about it when he was really just trying to help. So, yeah, they misconstrue it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, well. But, I mean, I wonder now, like after this conversation with Jack, and it doesn't seem like, at least to Tucker's face, mm -hmm. doesn't seem like he's budging on believing that Ashley needs help. I wonder if he is going to try to just do it himself because he feels like Jack isn't going to do anything. Yeah, I just, it, it's just crazy, um, you know, how, how this is all playing out. I gotta say, she's doing an excellent job playing the role, but, uh, yeah, Jack need to figure out what's going on with his sister instead of running up behind Nikki. And Tracy. And, mm-hmm. Tracy's the more level-headed one, and she actually feels that there is something wrong. I, I wish, if anything, Tucker went to her. Right, cause he. She, do you think that um, 
she probably would have listened to Tucker instead of the way Jack did. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Because she was at the cafe. She saw the wait staff and how emphatic they were with regard to what actually happened. Right. I guess I just don't understand with Tracy, though, because she, since she does believe that there's something going on with her, why are you waiting around for Jack to do something? That is true. Yeah. It's a weird dynamic being the baby and trying to ma- trying to get through to your older siblings. I will tell you from firsthand experience, not a one of them listens. Mm-hmm. Really? I never had one. Well, oh, here. Here you go, guys. Yeah, Check this out. This for us. I'm the baby. Do it for Check. yourself. Check this Actually. out. There is no us. And there never will be again. I think you'd have a different answer if we didn't have an audience. I hope you get to a better place. Wait really till what she tell Audra. You need to take on your own or with the support of your family because I am out. You heard him, Ashley. Out. Can we speak privately? Look, Ashley, I don't know what all of this is. Real, fake, crazy, sane. I I don't know. But whatever it is, it's over. Okay, this thing that you got chasing Tucker around, it's embarrassing. Do you really want to get rejected over and over again? Have a little self-respect. Tucker, could you put a muzzle on this yappy little bitch? You know what? Can you put a muzzle on this yappy little bee? I, when I heard that earlier, I was like, oh my gosh. That's hilarious. <laughs> so I had to share that with you guys. Oh my goodness, that was funny. Oh, thank you for that. Yes, you're welcome. I can't, I can sh- uh, show the audio, I just can't show the video. So. Uh, I can play the audio, I mean. But anyway, yeah, that was crazy. I figured you guys would like that one. Oh, that's my hilarious. God. <laughs> Ashley <laughs> cut up. But after that, that's when she started kind of spinning in her head like, oh, my God, where am I? So you'll see the rest of that on Monday. And um, yes, yes, yes. All right. Moving on. We got to talk about Diane and her fussing at Kyle for Kyle doing her work. Uh, You know, uh, he didn't do her work. He was a second set of eyes. And I will tell you from my firsthand experience, our CEO has given me things to review for him. And I have found stuff and edited things and it was greatly appreciated. Um, there have been a few times where there were some things that got released on our website without having a second set of eyes, and I caught it later, and we were able to fix it, and could have been embarrassing if it might have stayed up, you know. So, I think she is. Um, I think she is the one who really needs to think about what she's doing and understand that when you are a co CEO or the leader of the company, that you need to understand that your team is there to make sure that you look good right right well, I agree. That's not a problem. she's inexperienced she has no idea what a ceo does so she didn't know that, that was normal she and she has no clue the whole the whole appointment of her first of all even being the vice president of human resources was absolutely beyond absurd so y'all know what i think about this appointment it's okay. ludicrous yep yeah, I knew you had a lot to say about this one, Trish. <laughs> it is, well, it's ludicrous. I mean, it wouldn't. It, it just wouldn't happen. Yeah, I mean, Diane need to be grateful. She even have a whole redemption. I mean, she came back to town. Nobody could stand her. Jack didn't trust her. Her son's uh, relationship with her was hanging on a thread. She finally got in good. She's now married to Jack. She's living in the Abbott Mansion. She got everything she wants. And then you mad that your son proofread your work. Mm-hmm. Do you think she's insecure because she knows he's inexperienced? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Of course. Mm-hmm. Yep. Why she keeps lashing out at Kyle. And the interesting thing about it. And, oh, God, I, I don't want to give up too much more, but she kind of realizes going into next week that maybe this is not for her. But Jack is just so, oh, you know, I mean, 
it's like, dude, if she's telling you, I can't do the job or give it to our son because I don't know. You need to listen to that. Not just because he's, she's your wife and you just want her there. Jack and Devon are one and the same. Another man leading off of emotion mm -hmm. and, and not business sense. And the thing is, he knows she has little to no experience. Mm -hmm. And he put her in that position. But he can't help but wear his cape. He wears it well. He's been doing it for decades. Yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. You know, but... Yeah, Kyle, he kind of took it in stride. He was like, yeah, okay, uh-huh, mom, sure, no problem. I'll leave you alone. And then he left. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, sometimes people have to learn the hard way that, mm -hmm. you know, when you don't want to, when you think that you're the only one who can do this or that you're the only salvation for this company or that you're the only possible person that understands what's going on, you have a real problem. And it's you. I mean, honestly, and he's younger. You know, he's he he understands. I'm not saying because you're older, you don't. You know, there are times that you know, with my son, I'm doing something, and I'd be like, "Dang, how do you do?" He was like, "Mom, look, I got this. I can show you how to do it. I can do it." I'm like, "Okay, let me get out the way." You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I mean, take the help. But she's just exactly. like, "You're trying to undermine me." It's like, "Girl, stop it." Well, but you know why she thinks that? Because she knows darn good and well how many people she's undermined in her life. And she just thinks everybody else is going to do the same thing. That is and true. he did say that he was jealous. Right. But you don't give someone a presentation with edits that actually made it better because you're jealous. You give them to them because you have to make sure that they look good because... Your name is on the company wall. Exactly. Yeah. I had a, a weird theory when I first saw that scene. And I'm glad that Trish is back to bring up my hatred for, well, not hatred, my dislike for Diane. And, a, and when, I first, when I first saw that scene where she got mad at Kyle, I was like, well, what did you want him to see? It's like, what are you covering up? Oh. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, because, like, I'm with you. Because, like, Jack is nowhere to be found. She's basically the head of that company. She has eyes on all the makings of what's going on in Jabot. And it seemed like she's a little extra sensitive that Kyle was even eye eyeballing the information that she was looking at or making corrections. And it, it makes me also wonder if she did, if she made those mistakes on purpose or made those errors on purpose you think to try to set up the company to make it look bad yeah that's an interesting yeah. twist y'all i still don't know how i feel about the fact that I, I there's a part of me that thinks that she and tucker are playing the long game I mean, she was extra sensitive that Kyle was even looking at those documents because this is the same woman who went to great detail to fake her unaliving yeah, yeah, she was super sensitive. Yeah, that's interesting. That's I, I listen. That's good. See, this is why we have these conversations because of the fact that you just never know what other twists could come out of this. There's this other thing because we also have the situation with Claire, and I'm wondering because you know. Um, God, I got to stop talking about next week. But it kind of seems like they're pushing the, 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 I guess, putting seeds out there that she might not be as 100% pro-Newman as the Newmans think. Hmm. Uh, I believe that 100%. I think she and Diane are one and the same. They're going to just play their role and then do a complete sneak attack. What about you, Keish? I don't... I mean, Diane is... She, yes, is a frustrating character. She still annoys me. But I don't I don't know that I think that she's pl plotting some big takedown of, mm. of Jack and the boat. Okay. What about, um, now, you know what, well, we got to also talk about Claire and Kyle, because do you think that they are being chem tested again? Yeah, they are. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. 
Yeah. And the way he was slowly leaving that table. <laughs> he was... I, yeah, I'm still trying to I'm still trying to decide whether or not she is for real, like trying to genuinely be a part of the family or is she on some type of mission still from Yeah, and see that goes into that's why I was saying that goes into next week, Keish, because it kind of looked like they're planting seeds of doubt about this girl. We don't have a villain right now, except for Jordan, but that could be one in hand in hand, or, or maybe they're working two different angles. If she's not working with Jordan, maybe she's working her own angle. Yeah. Yeah. You know, anything is possible. Would y'all be interested in seeing Kyle and Claire? I don't know yet. I guess I need to see more scenes with them. I, I, I don't know. Her character is so stoic, it's hard to get a read on any yeah. emotions. That is true. <clears throat> She's stoic, and there's something um, kind of adolescent about her. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, because she's been, um, you know, not uh, infantilized is probably not the right word, but there's a word close to it that is much more like sheltered, babied, you know. Um, like arrested development. Problem. Hmm? Arrested development. Bingo. Yeah, mm -hmm. she just, for some reason, she reminded, like, I I forget sometimes that she's supposed to be in, like, her mid-20s. Mm -hmm. It's like she regressed to, like, an early childhood, and this is the same woman who tried to hit on Nate. That is true. You know what? You guys are right, because when you think about it, when she first came onto the scene, she was this adult businesswoman. You know, and being Nikki's assistant, and like you say, her and Nate, you know, they tried, look like they tried to chem test them at that time, too. But then, like you say, it kind of, they kind of shifted her, like you say, her childlike behavior or, you know, yeah, I agree with you on that. Yeah, and I think it totally is, like, after we found out about the whole I'm Jordan thing and, like, uh-oh. No, knowing what Jordan did to her mm -hmm. all those years, mm -hmm. and then um, her stint in in the hospital when she was with the kids—not that she was acting, like a child, but there was just yeah, it was just something about that that changed the way I viewed her, and just it just makes her seem like a like she's younger than what she is. Gotcha. So then it's kind of weird. It feels weird to think of her with Kyle because I. It's almost like, and, and even like in the way that Victoria and Cole talk to her, and the way that Nikki talks to her, mm -hmm. it's like they're talking. It's like they're talking to a little kid sometimes. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like she's and they dress her like she's about to go to Walnut Grove, <laughs> and and I'm like, and they want to put her with Kyle, and Kyle has a whole child himself. Yeah. So she can't be, you know, like teenage like with this grown man. But you know what they could do with her character is she could become like the nanny or the the whatever the, uh, for the kid, and um, and then get some kind of an attachment to Kyle, and then be like a total psychopath. Mm. You know, um, mm -hmm. and Kyle may or may not even be interested in that. Uh, you know, in her in the storyline, it would even be better if he wasn't, and she in her mind thought he was. I mean, that could be really. That could be a really a dark story, but it could be could be kind of fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jasmine Williams said Claire is robotic in her delivery. Yes, yes, she is. Yeah. Mm hmm. I agree with that, Jasmine. All right, and then the other storyline this week is this whole situation with Jordan. She's actually alive. Victor was not happy that. Um, you know, she saved her and called 911. And now Jordan has escaped from the hospital. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, we didn't call that one. Right. <laughs> See, she took an Ambien and she had a little Kool-Aid and she woke up from her nap. Like, a... <laughs> <laughs> and if Victor's mad at his idiot wife, he had a hold of Jordan before Nikki did. Yeah. I mean, you know, I 
I look at that whole scene of them trapping her in there. And first of all, yeah, she came after you, but now you're the kidnapper. I mean, it, it, it's the truth. Um, you could be held liable for everything. I don't, wh- why would you not call the police as soon as you had her trapped? Right. Where was the FBI? She literally murdered people in a prison and burnt down a federal building. Yeah, did I miss something? What was what was Victor's plan with that? Well, originally, remember, uh, he and Michael met her in that dark alley. They yeah. was originally going to give her some money and a house and all that stuff and thought that she was going to be greedy enough to take it. Well, she's too psychopathic for that. She'd rather stay in town, forgo the money, and, and unalive them. <laughs> Crazy and sorta of smart. Uh, <laughs> I mean, she said she's been smart this far, but when she refused the money and the house, I'm like, listen, you talking about ten million dollars and a house in the south of France? Thank God. But so what was his goal after he caught her and had her in that that basement? What did he did he say what he was planning to do? I think he was gonna leave her there because remember nobody knew where she was until Nikki begged Nikki Victoria and Claire begged him to tell her, them where she was because they wanted to have their closure. Yeah, I thought he left her there to, to rot. He left her there to, to go away. And Claire agreed with him. Yeah. Which is stupid. This is the same woman who was in vents. She can get through the air conditioning system. Y'all are just some idiots. I, I don't understand why Victor is against hiring proper security, going through proper channels. He's able to get access. The Newmans have had access to Jordan. Nikki, for the most part, via phone. So you guys have had communication with this woman for months. You finally had access to her. You leave her in a closet. Then you bring all the other women to, to, to say their goodbyes. And then and Jordan talking about, like, Victoria never had a man. And, 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 and Nikki's a stripper, drunk and everything. All the stuff we knew. Mm-hmm. But she could have been locked up in jail saying this stuff. I, wonder, I don't understand that part of the writing. Yeah, I mean, I I think they really like keeping Colleen Zink around. That's why she keep getting caught, escape. She burned the building down, escape. She ended up unalive in Seth and ended up in the back alley. And now she got to the hospital, she escaped again. She got on a whole new disguise next week. And it's just like, okay, I know you. she's a good actress. You want to keep her around, but the storyline got to make sense. You know, honestly, when Nikki was at that AA meeting today, I thought that the redhead that we saw the back of her head, I thought that they were going to go over Nikki's shoulder and show us, and it was going to be, what's her face, uh, Jordan, but they didn't. Oh, yeah, it's not, she coming back as a whole dude. (laughs) A whole dude? (laughs) Her disguise is a man. Oh, my. There's there's Phyllis' man right there. Oh. (laughs) <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> you stupid. Do <laughs> you need any kind of man? Any kind of man? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I just, I, I just hate that they're dragging it out because at first she came for November sweeps, and that whole thing was worth November sweeps. Then when they were in Oregon. You know, the Newmans were at the weakest point that they've ever seen. They finally were humbled. Victor was hanging on. She was up in the bedroom with an IV. Nick had a tummy tuck. And, of course, the ice queen was poison. You know, we saw the Victorian doll with the bloody eye and the needle in the neck and all that. So, November sweeps, okay, cool. She came back for February sweeps, and they just kind of been breadcrumbing the storyline. Does that make sense? Uh Yeah. Yeah, so, I don't know. I guess we won't ever see the end of Jordan, so. And DeWan, they're not going to ruin her like Sheila Carter. If anything, Jordan's been winning. She's committed several crimes within a year and has not touched 
uh, handcuffs, not one. Hey, listen, could you imagine if they locked Liam in that dungeon with Jordan? He, You could hear him screaming for miles. <laughs> like, Thomas, come save me. <laughs> not right, right, like last time. Exactly. Yeah. He would, he'd be screaming until his voice went out. And then he'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know. He loves older women. We see what he did with Quinn. Oh, so. uh, come on now. You stupid. <laughs> Girl, you silly. Liam and Jordan. Could, I don't know. What did Quinn name? I don't remember. Adam. That's right. Oh, my they goodness. They were Adam, Adam and Eve. That's right. That's right. But he had bumped his head or something, didn't he? Yeah, it was something like that. Yeah, he fell outside by his car. Like a couple of times. Upside Listen, that him. man bumped into tree limbs. He's always running into something. <laughs> Even Steffi both have had injuries. Or else he just get punched. Yeah. <laughs> or he's just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> a, little bit, a little bit of everything. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Did we cover everything uh, in this episode? I mean, in this week's episodes? I think. I think we did. It was uh, It was a lot. What time is it? Oh, okay. We only did an hour fifteen. I thought it was longer than that actually. Um, let me think. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we did cover everything. Cool. Oh boy. Time to go to bowl. But before we do, how many people in the chat can you see on your end? 134. Ooh, nice. Okay, you guys, make sure before we switch over to the bold and the beautiful, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Also, it's people been coming over to the Facebook group. I love it. I love it. I love it. And um, we've been having a good time. I've been posting clips of the bold and the beautiful over there today i know a lot of you have enjoyed it so um come over there and join us myself and the one is posting over there del monica is posting over there as well so we keep a lot of content over there spoilers are there for next week the monday episode recap is um in that uh facebook group as well so i am going to drop it in the chat so therefore if you want to go over there and follow us um and join the facebook group you can um we're also on threads ig tiktok and x and then there's also a blog as well and then i'm also on rumble so rumble is um just like youtube it's a different platform, but um, it's a lot of um, uh, attention over there on that side as well. So there's fans over there, fans over here, fans everywhere. All right. Okay, enough of the housekeeping. Y'all ready for bold? Yes, ma'am. Yep. Yep. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Let's do... Hold on. Let me... Um, Pull up the summary for the bold and the beautiful for the week of the 25th through the 29th. As Hope complains, Steffi's undermining her. Steffi is urging Thomas to leave the country with Douglas and dump Hope. Um, Steffi taunts Brooke about Hope getting a rude awakening as Hope begs Thomas not to let his sister come in between them. As Hope begs him not to, Thomas resigns and tells Hope he is leaving the country with Douglas. Um, after Hope says a tearful goodbye to Douglas, Steffi is vindicated and gloating that he and Thomas are out of her life. And Hope tries to slap Steffi during a fight. Steffi calls her trash and Hope gives her a warning. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Let's get Zenday and Luna out the way. Zenday, go take several seats. First of all, you're walking in without knocking. What is the deal? Y'all are not that close anymore. Well, wait a minute. That ain't even his house. That's our, He walked in without knocking into RJ's house. Walked in without knocking. 
That's crazy. That, oh, girl, I've never understand on bowl why they don't lock doors. I've always said that. Yep. <laughs> you know, but I just why, go ahead, Bree. I was gonna say, why is this man going to great lengths to try to convince her to be with him? Mm-hmm. Why? She didn't said in so many ways that she is RJ's. You know, and it's time. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that was it. I was just like, that makes no sense. Mm-mm. Well, and it's times like these with everything that's, that's gone on in the world with issues like this. That, that, can can Luna just say, look, dude, you need to leave until he's here. Call before you come. If he doesn't answer you, then wait until he answers. I mean, this put your foot down. Like, quit, quit looking and smiling out from under your eyelids and say, dude, I didn't even, didn't see you. You weren't in the room, dude. You weren't even in the room. <laughs> I don't. Leave me alone now. I, I just, I, go ahead, Keish. Oh, go ahead, Keish. I was going to say, um, I feel like, I feel like Luna letting Zen, like from the start when she let Zenday know that she wasn't interested, that she has probably given the most straight up rejection that I've ever seen on so. Because she she explicitly said to him, um, you know, I, I appreciate the gesture gesture when um, I think they were in the design office. The dinner. She, well, it was even before that. She told him because he said something to her in the in the design office about um, uh, how he was into her or interested in her. I forget how he worded it, and I remember her saying, telling him then like. You know, basically, RJ RJ is the only one I'm inter- interested in. He's the one that basically I want to be with. Um, and, like, thanked him for the compliments and stuff like that. And then that's when he said something like, well, just just remember, RJ's not the only Forrester coming up around here. Or something like that. Right. Oh, you're talking then, about a while ago, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then she said it again. And then she told him again at the dinner. Like, I, she straight up said, I'm not interested. <laughs> and you never, we never get that on soaps. It's always a roundabout way, not not explicitly clear. They leave the door open a little bit. There might be a little bit of flirting. Like, Luna has not flirted with this man a single bit. She's mm-hmm. been nice to him, but she hasn't flirted with him at all. So <laughs> him think that she is romantically interested in and Or she, she hasn't She was high on those men. That was the only time. Yeah, I agree she hasn't flirted. I just wish when he was sitting at the bar with her Mm -hmm. like that, that, you know, put distance between the two of you. Get up, move. When he's moving into your space, back up and put something between you because he needs to catch a clue. This dude needs to catch a clue. Yeah. You got to in the most uncomfortable situation with each other and you're still talking about wanting to be with her. (laughs) Yeah. I I don't like how they... Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Bree. No, I was, was going to say, I don't like how they wrote this new Zen day to be chasing after the women. Mm-hmm. Because, like, this is the exact same thing that happened with Paris. And Paris had no problem using him. And he was a complete and total simp for her. Meanwhile, she's sleeping with this person, going to the next person, marrying, trying to marry Mike Carter at the drop of a hat. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, and then now with Luna, and I'm like, Zenda used to be this this hot, spicy, well, not spicy, but like this hot guy that, you know, the girls was all on him. I want to see this bad boy, playboy Zendi that we started to get a little bit of at the, early, at the beginning of this year. Yeah, I just, um, I don't know why they're writing this. Who decides that you slept? Y'all slept together. She didn't even think it was you. She thought it was RJ. And then you think that she's just going to remember whatever experience you had and say, ooh, I want to go back to that. No. Maybe he was expecting her to notice a difference. (laughs) I get, But why are they even entertaining this? Are they eventually going to put these two together? Exactly. The whole thing is just made me just annoyed ever since it happened. It's like, man, I mean, let's just be real. 
people do a lot of stuff. Um, I don't know that in any case in my life that I have seen a completely different human being in front of me, regardless of anything that I did, that was absolutely a thousand percent not even close to looking like another person that I know. Yeah. I don't even want want them together at this point. Just no. done all this. Yeah, they should have put them together in the beginning. Before RJ let him try to undermine the two of them. They got better chemistry, but it's kind of tainted. You know, and then to try to say, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to put you together because I remember the night that I slept with you and didn't think I was I was high. You know, it's just weird. It's just really weird. All right. The rest of the storylines this week is dope. And the first part of it, because we came back with a bang coming off of not having a Thursday and Friday episode last week. That long wait was worth it. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I didn't expect, you know, I thought there was going to be a breakup, but I did not. It looked like Thomas is leaving, leaving, period. I didn't yeah. see, and I know a lot of people in the comment section has been saying Matt Atkinson is leaving the show. I have not seen any of that. That's why I have not responded until I see some updates, some articles, or even he himself coming out on his social media saying, you know, like Wyatt did, you know, Darren Brooks did say, hey, I'm no longer over at so-and-so. I, I can't verify that. So that is shocking. I just assume it's, he's taking a vacation, like yeah. Oh, it's it's a lot of folks saying that he's gone. Oh yeah, he's gone. He's gone. You know. He the main lead on the show. I can't. Yeah, I, I, I thought that was the big news. Yeah. Right. Thor, Thorsten went away for three months, and he came back with a ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and here's my thing. I don't blame Matt for taking a break. The dude just got married like three months ago. You know, he probably wanted, he's still in the honeymoon phase. He might want to say, hey, I need some time off. I've been biting and kissing on Annika. I need to be biting and kissing on my wife. <laughs> so, <laughs> what you say? And make some kids. And make some kids. Say shine. You know. <laughs> practice and have some fun practicing. Yeah, I don't. I think aren't they in their mid to late thirties? I think. They, yeah. Yeah, it's like this. I okay. Think yeah, I think I don't know how old Brittany is. I don't know if she wants kids. Maybe they're ready to have a family or something. I don't know. But I can see him taking a break. And like one of you just said, Thorsten took three months off mm -hmm. to go find himself. Remember, he said, "I gotta go find." <laughs> So maybe that's what maybe that's what Matt is doing. He's taking a little bit of a break. A sabbatical. I know a lot of people are hoping that you know he's back for May sweeps. I don't know. I guess we have to see. But as of now, nobody from CBS or from J Matt's camp has came out to say that he's done over at Bold. So I cannot address that. Yeah, I can't see that happening. Mm -hmm. He's the main lead. Every other word on the show is Thomas. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, I just, people are like, oh, yeah, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone. So, I don't, I can't say that. So, I'm not going to, and I know a lot of uh, soap bloggers are trying to be responsible because there was some big issues that happened in the fall with some other content creators. And so we're trying to be very careful with the information that is coming out. However, Ivy is back. So just putting that out there. Ashley Brewer is coming back as Ivy. So what, what did y'all think about um, Hope's reaction to Thomas telling her in that visceral scream where she after she threw the ring? Well, wait awesome. a minute, girl. We got to get past Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday first. Y'all, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you jump straight to Thursday. Well, I'm looking at that photo on the bottom right, and that's right after she screamed like that. And I was like, oh, man, that hurt so bad. Yeah, Thomas took the peen away. 
girl, listen. I mean, I'm sorry. I know I I have I know you guys probably have been listening to my recaps, but yeah, I got a little, very little sympathy right there. So, I mean, I unfortunately I thought it was hilarious. So, and that's why I had that particular picture because it's like we'll get to her. But the first thing that happened at the beginning of the week is the conversation between Steffi and Thomas. And Steffi, I mean, Thomas was heartbroken. Steffi was over there saying, look, I told you so. I've been telling you this for months. You need to let her go. Get the French toast out of here. Take your son and be out. Do you think she was overstepping? Because a lot of people are not happy with her input this week. If some woman was using one of my brothers without a commitment like that, knowing how how deeply in love my brother was with her and... He proposed and she said no for, you know, the second or third time. Is it the third time? And um, I would probably tell him to step back. Listen, Trish. apologize for it. Trish, that comment, because remember I told you I got blocked on Twitter by somebody? <laughs> my Yes, I did, Keish. Um, my statement was similar to that, but I used my son instead. Uh-huh. And I said the same. If my daughter saw my son in that same situation, I would hope that she would say, you need to let it go. Yeah, let her go. You know, what's the old saying? If you love someone, set them free. They come back to you, fine, but just set them free, man. Yeah, well, they set me free because I got blocked, so. <laughs> but that's okay because you have your own whole... I know. I just, <laughs> listen... <laughs> Oh yeah, over uh, an opinion on a TV show to where they mocking people because they don't a like fictional. Show. Listen, fictional Keish, right, right. Keish, it's people. So funny. It's really funny. And here's the thing, Keish. I Keish, they were other people were replying to my post, and I couldn't even see them. I don't even know how I got the notification that they were still talking about my post. <laughs> but when I got in there, they said so and so has blocked you. All because, and like I said earlier, you missed this. I said, I did not say any curse words. I didn't disrespect the host of the, you know, that account. I didn't say it. I just said, hey, if my kids were in that situation, I would hope that my daughter would do that for, you know, my son. And, yeah, I got blocked. That's so great. <laughs> uh, let me get my tiny violin out for him. <laughs> Oh man, so you so um you guys agreed that well wait a minute, I heard from Trish. Keisha and uh, Bree, y'all think she overstepped? She I would have liked for her to identify with her past mistakes because and like I was saying on Wednesday, like as much as she can rag on him from like trying to like wait for hope and like being um a doormat and you know um, allowing someone to control their life and like, dick, you know, holding out for like hope. Well, Steffi did that for Liam for years. Mm -hmm. Both of them. Yes, both of them. If anything, you, she could have been like, look, I made mistakes just like you. I've also had to move on and I can show that it, it, you can move on from that person you feel that you love so much and get the love and validation that you deserve. I would have loved for her to have said that versus basically kind of in her tone it seemed like well i was right and you know you knew i was right so you need to listen to and do what do as i say it was very dictator shit from her and versus being you know loving except for like a few moments where she was loving but it was very dictatorship it's like she was happy she succeeded getting her brother out of the country and what about you keish um, I, I don't fault her for stating her opinion. I, I would do the same thing with my siblings, and I have done the same thing with my siblings when they have dated people that have proven to be um, not not have their best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like I feel like telling him to leave the country was a, that was a little overboard and unnecessary. Like, why? 
Um, I mean, unless it, if she had said, you know what, go out of town for for a week or two and mm. refresh and, you know, just clear your mind, spend some quality time with Douglas and come back or something like that, like, that wouldn't have been, you know, that bad. But it's like she's telling Thomas to leave forever just to get away from Hope. And I'm like, it's not that serious. Like, he's, he's, he's a big boy. He's going to have to deal with his heartbreak. Um, moving out of the country and completely um, leaving his family is not necessary. Mm. Um, but I don't think that she—I don't think she overstepped in general because that's that's his sister, and she's going to share her opinion. She's been sharing her opinion. Um, mm. This wasn't anything new. It just—it just happened on a day when he got rejected and he was upset. So yeah, gotcha. He was a little bit more harsh and a little bit more emphatic this time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she was very private at home, you know. Right. But that's how Steffi has always been blunt. That's yep. not that's not a new trait either. Nope. No, that's who she is. <clears throat> I mean, if she punched Sheila Carter in the face and yelling and screaming and carrying on, that's just Steffi. <laughs> yeah. Always in somebody's business. Yeah, that's definitely Steffi. Yeah. Um. Okay. So now we got because I kind of want to piecemeal these two. The conversation in the CEO office, because, of course, we got a separate conversation in the design office between Thomas and Hope. That conversation with Hope, with uh, Brooke and Ridge and Steffi. What did y'all think about the confrontation between Ridge, I mean, between Steffi and Brooke? Tame. <laughs> she said tame. Quiet and tame. Ridge needed to leave the room. I was very upset. <laughs> That we couldn't get an episode where Brooke and Steffi were really going to have a real fight because they, well, Brooke was minding her P's and Q's because she finally got her man back. So she doesn't want him to slip any other direction. But Ridge needed to leave their room because I really wanted Brooke to share her thoughts and let Steffi have it because this was a quiet Brooke. Quiet. Steffi's talking about her and her daughter. This is a quiet Calm, passive aggressive Brooke. Mm. Who's next? Um Yeah, she was she was very <laughs> passive aggressive. I I know a lot of people were saying they couldn't believe that Riz was just standing there letting Steffi say what she was saying to Brooke. Because um, Brooke is being fake. Exactly. Like it, it's <laughs> I don't. I didn't believe a word that came out of her mouth. Nope. Her only concern is that her daughter is upset. Mm-hmm. Like you, you, there is not enough money in the world to make me believe that Brooke is happy or is upset that that they're breaking up and that their family is breaking up and that Thomas is leaving the country. Like, get out of here with that. She's definitely putting on a front for Ridge. <clears throat> I, it's just, it's not genuine at all. So I couldn't take her serious in that conversation with Steffi when she was telling Steffi um, that think about, did you think about the kids and their happiness and their family and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you have never felt that way. You have nope. never felt that way about the two of them. And I, mm -hmm. I'm not believe that you really feel that way now. Nope. So, so standing there fussing at her about, um, she said something like, you have you have no business or no right trying to dictate my daughter's life, and it's like, lady, you've been doing that her entire adult life up until two weeks ago, basically. <laughs> and I don't care that it is your daughter; she's a, she's an adult. You have no business doing that either. So don't stand there and act like you have always let your daughter think for herself when you've always been in your daughter's ear, um, trying to get her to do what you wanted her to do when it came to her love life. Right, Miss. I'm gonna arrange a marriage for you and Liam on the cliff. Yeah. So I, it, it was just, it, you just couldn't take her serious in that conversation because you know that that's not, that has not been who her character has been when it comes to Thomas ever. She's never been like that. The other thing, Thomas called her out about it too. I, and I was happy that he did that. He was yeah. like, "Isn't this what you want? What do you mean? What you talking about?" 
Yeah, she looked and she had the nerve to stand there looking confused and right. Thomas said exactly. Well, and not only that, I mean, when Thomas and Douglas left, Douglas didn't hug Brooke or say goodbye, Grandma Brooke, or anything like that. Nope. <laughs> he didn't really turn around and walk. He stopped, looked back, turned around, and walked out. I was like, "Oh man, did he?" Oh yeah. This girl on the way out. Listen, Brooke. I mean, uh, Douglas cut up this week. Ooh, yeah, we going we going we going to get little, little Douglas, Henry Samiri. We going to get him. I'm telling you. Um now, yeah, but going back to what you were saying, I mean, Ridge let Steffi go in. He let Steffi go in and the look on his face was, yeah, she's right. <laughs> and to be fair, he has allowed Brooke to do that. Exactly. He said about um, his kids to him or in front of him without shutting her up. So that's why I didn't feel bad that he didn't shut Steffi down. When he and he did tell Steffi like, hey, like you need to let's calm down or how let's not say that or let's not do that. So it's not like he didn't say anything at all. I think people were expecting him to to yell at Steffi and cuss her out. And it's like this man has stood by for years and have, has allowed Brooke to disrespect his children. So I don't, I don't have any sympathy for her or feel bad for her that he's not, you know, up in arms and defending his wife. I, I don't care. <laughs> That's why I wish he would have just left the room so we can really get the real argument and we get the real um, shade being brought. I want Brooke to be in her element. I did not like how passive she was this whole week because I actually would have liked to have seen her be excited that Hope and Thomas aren't together or at least, you know, uh, if, if it, whenever her children are under attack, we get to see Brooke in her real element. I wanted to see that this week. Yeah, I would have had more respect for Brooke if she had just, if she had maintained what she felt about that relationship this entire eight yeah. months. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, hey, like I'm happy they broke up. But at the same time, I, I, my daughter did say she had feelings. There was no reason for you to attack her. But there should have been way more dialogue. And Steffi has just drove that whole conversation. I hated that part because we we seen Brooke really go at it. Well, did you see that look? This and I think we talked about that on Wednesday, Bree. That look that Steffi gave Ridge, like, what you gonna say? Something? I'm still yeah. talking. <laughs> Well, didn't she say, "I don't need my father to tell me anything"? Yeah. When Brooke said, "Are you gonna, are you gonna stand there and let her talk to me like that, or whatever it was that she said to mm -hmm. Tariq, I don't need my father to tell me anything." That was so funny. I laughed. <laughs> then the other parts of her conversation that she had going toward the end of the week is, well, why did he have to leave? He could have did this. I'm like, he's not going to move the way you want him to. He's been doing that long enough for y'all. Right. He's going to, he made a decision and now she's going to have to deal with it. He made decisions. Decisions. <laughs> <laughs> Decision. Speaking about decisions, we gotta go across the hall because while that's going on, Thomas is about to break the news to Hope. And she leads off with don't let Steffi come in between us. Um, I don't think that's it, my girl. Yeah. Look at what you do for me. Look at how you make me feel. Everything you do for me, I'm happy, Thomas. Why are you taking my happiness away? Yeah. Very yeah. selfish. Yeah, I thought so. And then when she kept trying to put this off on Steffi, he was like, uh, Steffi is not the issue. I need to ask you a question. Do you ever see yourself being committed to me? She said, I can't answer that. That didn't help your cause, Hope. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and listen, uh, these conversations, because I've had some in these comment sections and stuff, and there's a hope page, and I think I got muted over there, too, on Facebook. <laughs> hey, my goodness. <laughs> That is so funny. It, it is. The security team is monitoring social media. <laughs> Listen. Tachi, tachi. 
I went back to try to find my comment. I couldn't get to it. I'm like, oh, I guess I got <laughs> muted. Um. Anyway, listen, the thing is, is that, you know, a lot of people are not happy saying, why couldn't he just stuck around? He could have just hung in there. Why would you want somebody who, if he wants a commitment, and I said this on my recaps, I think I said on Wednesday, if he wants a commitment and she don't want that and don't see it down the road, what are we doing then? Right. And well, you only get one life. And plus, it, he's he's already shown that he wants marriage and he wants a family. He's been sticking it out for over 12 years mm -hmm. for that girl. So he's just tired. Same way Steffi was tired of Liam and she had to move on. It, it's he, He's not asking for much except for to be the woman that he, he's in love with and fully commit to her. Yeah. Yeah. Did, she, did she actually say, because I can't remember, did she actually say she didn't know if she could ever see? She said she, that she couldn't. <laughs> she said, you know I can't answer that question. That's what she said. Uh -huh. She said it just like that. Thomas, you know I can't answer that. And that's what that's what confuses me is that she, didn't she also tell him she doesn't want to be, or was she talking to Brooke? I can't remember who she was talking to. But she said she doesn't want to be with anybody else. She loves him. She wants to be with him. And I still I still get her her side of things saying that she's not ready. Like that's right, like, exactly. argument. She just got divorced. Mm -hmm. She's been broken up for Liam for less than a year. Um, so that's not the that's that's not really, I guess, the issue. I, it's just if she's saying is she saying to him, I don't want to be with anybody else. I want to, I only want to be with you. I, I just want to hear her say, what is it other than processing her divorce? Is there something else that's well, holding back from wanting to completely commit? To? And at least saying, mm -hmm. at the very least saying, I do see my future with you. Well, you know what? Um, I honestly believe part of also what he said because he brought up maybe you still haven't gotten over my past what is it why is it that you know you don't know you can't keep blaming it on Steffi you can't keep saying because she's double talking because one one moment I love you it's just you I like the way you make me feel and then the flip side she's saying I just got out of a marriage and all and I'm like but you we had this discussion last week, last Wednesday, where, and Trish, you weren't here for that one, but the whole situation about, okay, you the one left your relationship to get with Thomas. Right. So it's not like, how are you talking about, you know, I just got out of a marriage, but you got out of that marriage to be with him. Yep. You literally took yourself out of that marriage. Yeah. And I mean, there's this other question that's been out there talking about Steffi is the one influencing Thomas to do this. No, Thomas made a decision. Steffi has been on Hope's neck about this whole thing well before Hope actively pursued Thomas. When she saw the glances and the hand touches in the office and she was like, you better not make a move on my brother. Oh, Steffi, no, it's not like that. What are you talking about? The San Francisco thing happened. Steffi and, and, and even Taylor before she left, they both were trying to talk Thomas out of this and he didn't budge. He wanted to pursue this. He got to the end and made the decision himself because if Steffi was the main one that pushed him out of this. This should have ended a long time ago. Right. Yeah. This is a grown man. Ain't nobody going to make a decision for him. No. Yeah. And, he, and it's not like it was a situation where she rejected him. Um, he took it, you know, he, you know, sad, of course, but they weren't mad at each other. And then he talked to Steffi and told Steffi that he was, you know, he got rejected. And then she went into her spiel, and then he changed his, his attitude about it. The man was mad immediately after she rejected him. He was already upset about it. So the fact that she's not, she's not acknowledging that 
it's almost like she was because because she, she she kept saying if it wasn't for you we would have been able to work through this so you're basically saying that um you would have just convinced thomas to forget about how he feels right and do what you want him to do to, to stay with you instead of breaking things off because he feels like he needs to take a step back because you can't you still can't commit to him and I'm not saying that Thomas is is not being um, irrational about this because you know yeah she just got divorced and I, I do feel like he overreacted a little bit in this situation because he keeps taking it upon himself to propose um, but at the same time th- this is how he feels like this is this is what he wants for himself and so he's not wrong for having those feelings but for her to say that um, if it wasn't for you, I could have basically could have convinced him to stay with me. You're you're dismissing his feelings. Yeah. I'll actually, I actually, and my thing is, I when it comes to Sophie, yes, she's incredibly nosy. She really had she she's oh, she's okay to have her opinion about her brother, but. Do I feel that she has influence on Thomas? No. I, I feel that there's been a lot of the family members, Brooke included, Brooke probably the main one who was completely against Hope and Thomas. It didn't stop those two adults from making their choices and going Correct. about their business. Right. And Thomas has always been very clear. I'm a grown man. I make my choices. I got it under control. Stay out of your, stay out of my business. He has always made that very clear. He, he didn't mind the comments. He's used to, he, he water off the duck's back. But as far as being influenced by his sister to make these decisions, no, this, mm-hmm. this is a grown man. He could have easily have stayed and said like, hey, but, but Douglas doesn't need to be away from his mother or be uprooted from, you know, his friends and, and all of this. But he made a major decision. Same way with his work, too. All yeah, because Steffi didn't say anything about, did, what, did she say something about No, him? not that we saw. No, I don't think he, I don't think she knows. Well, she know now. Yeah. I have to go back and watch their conversation. I didn't. I, I that conversation they had on Monday was about leaving town with take some time away, not quit Forrester. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah that was blindsiding to everybody. Yeah. It was blindsided to us too. We thought they was just gonna break up. We didn't know the man was gonna quit the job. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I do remember. I do when he said that. I remember audibly saying, "Oh damn, I wasn't expecting that." <laughs> right. I mean, we got a, Thomas called her out on other things. He was like, "You know, you have been a totally different person over this past year." He said that. What is this? You wanted to take a ride with the bad boy? You know, he he was trying to figure this thing out. What are we doing? What? Why are you doing what you're doing? And Jasmine Williams in the comment section says, I completely understand her not wanting to jump into a marriage, but the excuse about mourning a bad marriage while selfishly demanding his total devotion with no promises is wrong. Absolutely. That was well put, well said. <clears throat> And that's why we're, I'm glad that he came to this point on his own and nobody can say that he's going to the dark side, that, that he's slipping back to old ways. This is a change, reformed Thomas in it. I was so happy to see this this week. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then you know, that con- the combo that he was having with her when he, he, there was a couple of times he said, maybe said he was right. Yeah. And I like as he kept saying that, I'm like, yeah, they're about to put this whole thing on Steffi because he's he's saying this to hope maybe Steffi was right. So now it gives the it gives the impression that um, had he not had a conversation with Steffi, that he wouldn't be thinking this hard about breaking up with her. You know what she the interesting tailored. thing about this is is that she's not taking accountability for anything of this. Mm-hmm. No. I mean, granted, she don't have to marry him, but the ring. 
that she was dangling around her neck. They called her out twice on that. I mean, if you really was not looking for a commitment, why you even take the ring? And then she's like, well, he told me to wear it. Uh, you didn't have to wear it. You could have said no. You could have said no. You're a grown woman. Didn't Douglas even call that out? Yeah. Yeah, Doug, girl. Listen, and see, that's the thing about all of this is because she want to blame Steffi. She wants to, you know, blame everybody else for this instead of saying, you know what? Let me take some account. I shouldn't have wore that ring. I shouldn't have gave you false hope. When you told me to wear it, I should have just said no. And then that, you know. I should have maybe took a step back, but they were intertwined. She even called it my family and our relationship. Mm -hmm. This is not like, I think, Keish, remember you were saying last week that maybe they should have started off as just, um, what is it, uh, as, a, as a fling or something? They should have had an affair. Affair, they yes, what you said. They should have had an affair the whole summer mm -hmm. and then the angst or like this situation that's going on now instead of it being about her trying to decide or not being ready for marriage it could have been about Thomas being sick of basically being the side piece mm -hmm. asking to make a decision about whether or not she's going to leave Liam mm -hmm. and for him or you know or they're going to end their little fling or whatever but of course, they wouldn't do that because it's it's a, the Hope Logan character is not going to be somebody that has a, a year long affair, you know, behind Liam's back. Mm -hmm. It would have been to me the storyline would have been better. It would have been steamier, um, and it would have it would have given her a little bit of uh, it would have added a little bit to her little character change. So I, I know they want to try to keep her like that pure, kind of innocent moral person but yeah um, that's not happening they could have had her do a they could have had them do a little affair it would have been hot steamy they could have been getting it in in the office and and then slowly everybody starts to find out and then mm -hmm. uh brooke is probably the, the the last to know she's probably the uh, the main one who's like disillusioned by it and then when she finds that it could have been it could have been a great affair uh, they could have had on BNB because I don't think they've had one in a minute, right? Well, Donna, when Eric was married to Quinn, but Quinn was with Carter, so. Yeah. That was a couple of years ago. It's been a while. Mm. It would have been really cool if they would have done that storyline that way, and then if Liam would have walked in on him. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I feel like they have to find out way too quickly. Yeah, they did. And, you know, because, I mean, Liam has to know the last few times they were together, she was thinking about Thomas because she was doing different things. <laughs> yeah. So, um, in that episode with that conversation, and he, you know, said, I'm leaving Hope for the Future, I'm going to Paris, and that he can't handle being around her anymore, that he needs to go. Uh, and he said something. He said, maybe there is someone out there who can love him the way that he loves them. Yeah. He put, girl, I was clapping. <laughs> I mean, we haven't, because he has been, I'm a one woman man and it's only you and it's always be you. He said, you know what? How about this? Since we can't get on the same page, how about I go find somebody out there who can love him and be on the same page as I give that same love back? She turns around and get annoyed. Instead of saying, man, okay, she got annoyed talking about he's not talking like himself. That tells me that she had an expectation of this man that he was going to always be that same dude that she could wrap around her little finger. Yeah, I think she said that oh, that's Steffi talking. Yeah, that's what he said. I mean, that's what she said. He said um, his sister is not his puppet master. Right. And he also said, I need to be the type of man that my son can respect. Yeah. I felt like that was kind of in insulting, in my opinion, to Which, say that that sounds like Steffi. Mm -hmm. As if Thomas can't think for himself. Right, and I'm glad he says she ain't my puppet master. Yeah. 
Yep. But, um, yeah, that whole thing, that went, what's that, Wednesday? I think that was Wednesday's episode. And he said the most painful part of this has been that he always had loved her. And the first time that she actually told him that she loved him back was when she was rejecting him. Yeah, that was hardcore. Yeah. That was like, I said, that's a, <laughs> that was an excellent episode on Wednesday. <laughs> Another one. Yeah, great writing. That should not have happened that way. Really? You don't think so? The first time her telling her. her oh, time. that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that should have been. That should have been ago. a huge dynamic moment for them. I don't know why they wrapped that into this proposal. They could have had her. And, and then this would it would have made much more sense. For him to be as upset as he was, they could have had they could have had the moment of her saying "I love you" like happened a couple of weeks ago or something like that. Right. They could have made that like a big milestone moment, and then and then had him propose to her because she said she said "I love you." So now you know, of course, Thomas being Thomas is thinking, "All right, you know, it's it's, it's time to do this again." She loves me. That means I have a chance of her saying yes. That would have made much more sense. And then he proposes, she rejects him, and then that that reaction that he had to me would have made coming from Thomas would have made a lot more sense with him having the idea of she loves me, so I don't understand why she will reject me again. Right. Instead of proposing before again before she had told him that she loves him, and then having the reaction that he did from that rejection, and it's like, well, Thomas, she didn't even say she loved him. So what did you expect? I mean, she said it. She did say it like at that point, but at the time that he proposed, she hadn't said it yet. I so agree. it just, yeah, just they just. I, I, I wonder sometimes do they sit down and think about this stuff before they start filming it? Like, you how know, hard would it have been for them to have an "I love you" scene by itself to make that a special moment? And you know, they should have had that I love you scene after Eric gave his blessing. I would have loved for her to have said I love you because during that time they were acting like a whole couple, like at the family events, holding hands, like right. just like like two people in love. I would have loved for her to say it way before now, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, it makes me wonder like why why they were holding back on having her say it like why did they think her saying it in this moment was a better idea than her saying it in a moment by itself and them having this this huge like milestone happen in their relationship yeah i don't know that's weird i, I understand where you're coming from too keish it don't make sense they should you have been saying that for the last month Remember yeah. you were saying they can make it where there's one episode where she can say I love you, you know. Yeah, and I, it's like, it's it's almost like they purposely write crappy storylines for Thomas's character. Not saying that the whole, the whole story of Thoke has been crappy, but they could have constructed this much better than what they had. Even down to, to a simple, the simple I love you scene. Mm -hmm. And they decided to wrap it into to this. <laughs> you know what um, What else about Hope? After the, re during that rejection when she said that she loved him. After that point, now she's just been saying I love this man like water coming out of her mouth. Right. Yeah. Now that you can't stop her from saying it now. It's like you waited. I always say this: you waited to the eleventh hour mm -hmm. to say it in the middle of a rejection. Now you want to tell the whole world how much you love this man. Where was that two months ago? A month ago, you know. So, all right. Anything else in that room, y'all want to talk about? No, because Douglas, he just. Oof. Yeah. Okay. Capitalize that L for her. <laughs> so, oh, go ahead, Keish. You just, you just gonna say something, Keish? Oh no, go ahead. 
Okay, so now down in the studio, this is where um, she's down there just sobbing. And then Brooke comes in and then she's, she's telling her, I'm so hurt because Thomas abandoned me. Yeah, I didn't like that. Mm -mm. She no. made herself a perpetual victim. Yeah, so, that was very much the victimhood. Uh, yeah. I didn't get what I wanted and he abandoned me. Yep. Pretty much. Yep. And how shocked she was that Thomas would dump her when he was so devoted to her. What would, Okay, so what did you bring to the table, ma'am? Besides, uh, besides Poom Poom. What else did you bring to the table? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, this man was feeding your ego. This, and this ain't Steffi talking. This is me talking. This man was feeding her ego. Telling her, and her face used to light up like a Christmas tree. Like, let me hear it again. I'm a you're you're a one woman man. You're devoted to me. And every time he said that, she ended up under the sheets with him. Yep, like a hot pocket, <laughs> feeling things that she has never felt before. I mean, so so was Steffi actually right in that conversation in the office about using Thomas as a toy? I kind of thought so, but I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like Hope was using him. I, I don't know. I don't feel like she was using him. I do think that she loves Thomas. I think she's in love with him. Now, Keish, do you think she loves him or in love with the D? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it seems like she was more sad that 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 that. He was going away versus Douglas was going away. <laughs> Did it seem that way? I think she truly does love him. Wait a minute, because remember in that office, she was all up in his face. I love how we make love together. Remember she said that? Yeah. I love how we make love together, Thomas. <laughs> she said, I think she said something like, um, just because I'm not ready to, I don't want to marry you or not ready to marry you doesn't mean that I don't want to be with you. Um, that I I don't want to. I think she said something about continue working, hope for the future with him, and and making still wanting to make love to him or something like that. Yeah. She said that she didn't want to lose him. I mean, she lost more than I mean because here's the thing. Yes, he got the girl, but what else? What else? You got the designer. You also got the co-parent with his son. You got the poom poom, and you got all of the ego boosts that turned you on each and every time. And that man was willing to fly you to Rome. He would have gave you anything you wanted. What do you, what, besides not giving him a commitment, because you don't have to do that, what else were you doing? And why should he hang on for that? Yeah. That, that that's what I'm not understanding with Hope because if she she would never be in this position and Brooke wouldn't let her be in that type of position mm -hmm. um, because if, if it was if it was Hope and Liam and and Hope wasn't getting that she I think she would have just left um, I feel that with Thomas he had several moments where he had an epiphany like hey she's really not into me but i think that he just was really driving off of this the fact that he loves her right and was just hoping that you know maybe if i show her this she might love me and it just didn't pay off for him in the end unfortunately yeah i always felt like that he because of his past and because of what he had done to her in the past that he felt like he had to do whatever it was that she wanted um and he was to make you know to keep her happy to make her happy and because of guilt um uh, you know in addition to of course being in love with her but I, I also think that he he felt guilty about the things that he's that he had done to her in the past so he was willing to pretty much do whatever she wanted to keep her happy um Bree. No, Lord. What did Jay say? I know it's got something to do with Yes. You know? Okay, Bree, you won't commit to me. Why am I holding on to you? <laughs> 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 look, look. Very own Hope 
Logan. Right. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. No. <laughs> I have commitments <laughs> in the bowl, in the soap world. Jay, I apologize. Oh, Lord. I, I apologize, <laughs> Jay. Well, go go to Paris and, and go and go take some time and, and I'm gonna get my life together over here somewhat. Oh my <laughs> god, y'all are too funny. All right. Um down in the studio we got um Brooke, like I said, Hope saying that Thomas abandoned her. She blames Steffi, who couldn't help herself attacking their relationship and thinks Steffi poisoned him against her. Now, Brooke did try to defend Steffi for being protective, but Hope was like, nope. Yeah. yeah. But then Douglas walk in. Now, see, okay, so they threw us off with the spoiler for this one for Thursday. Because they said that Hope and Thomas have a difficult discussion with Douglas. Um... No, it looked like Douglas had a difficult discussion with Hope. Yeah. And his discussion with Thomas was off screen. Exactly. Yeah. Be I uh, I didn't like that. I didn't like that Thomas talked to Douglas without Hope. Since they're co-parents, I feel like that should have been a group combo between the three of them. And not just him telling Douglas everything that happened. And I also thought it was, to me, I thought it was weird... I, I didn't think it was necessary for Thomas to even tell Douglas that he had proposed to her a couple of times and she rejected him twice. I mean, that, well, he had to explain that because the girl was wearing a, a ring around her neck and he knows that his dad wanted to marry Hope. Mm. And um, like Douglas was saying, like she gave both of their, their dreams up. So I think he knew and I and, the, and kids are going to be kids. Like, did she say yes, dad? Did she say yes? Yeah. And he probably had to break it down. Like, no, she didn't. And, and that's hard to tell a kid each and every time. And she rejected Thomas. God knows how many times. Yeah. Well, I guess if you, if you put it that way, if he noticed the ring and asked questions, then yes. Yeah. Because he said, um, on Thursday, how um he got his hopes up mm -hmm. and asked why she made it seem like they're going to be a family hope said we are a family and then douglas said well you can be a family if you're married too hope called marriage a big commitment that she's not ready for and how that doesn't mean that she doesn't love thomas or want to be with him and douglas thinks that she don't love his dad enough that's what he said and he even asked, why aren't we good enough? Oof. Yeah, that was, that was heart wrenching. Don't you guys feel like Thomas should have at least given her a heads up that she that he told Douglas? I, honestly, I agree that they should have done it together. I thought it was just really, I was jaw dropped when that kid walked in there. Like, he just, he knew everything. Like, he's just this little adult. And I'm going, man, this yeah. Well, I don't know if you guys <laughs> noticed that after that interaction, Inter interaction, Lord. After that interaction with an A um, happened in the design room between Thomas and Hope, they didn't see each other anymore after that, period. So, and he said that he didn't want to even be around her anymore. So maybe that's why. He didn't even say goodbye, I'm out of here, except, well, he said it in the design office, but. But, I mean, he still could have been a mature adult and called her or texted her and said, Douglas is on his way here. Um, I told him what happened, just so you know, instead of having her be blindsided by their by their kids. Well, Douglas said, the whole, then we got this other thing where she got a gut punch. When he said, you, um, I'll always be your mother. He said, Caroline is his mother. And she's gone. Yeah, I was not expecting that to come out of his mouth. And then he <laughs> said, my dad was good enough for her. Yeah, he did. That was wow. like, oh, my God, did that kid just say that? I was like, what am I watching? Right. <laughs> Father and 
and son just serving hope, nothing but L's, and she's trying to pick up her face, right? And pick up her pride, and just oof. Yeah, my my jaw hit the floor when he said that. When he said Carol Caroline Spencer is my mom. Yeah, like, that's ooh. deep. Dang, I feel I I did feel bad for hope in that moment. I no, no that was that was good dialogue. I was cheering. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> I mean, it's heart wrenching. But I, we have. When is the last time we seen that type of clap back on either one of these soaps? Just like we're enjoying what Since Ashley Quinn is doing. Brooke. What'd you say? Since Quinn slapped Brooke. Exactly. And listen to what Ashley just said to Audra on Monday. I mean, those are those drop the mic moments. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely was. I, oof, that was a that was harsh. It was. Yeah, because remember, but you remember Douglas was was begging for Hope to be his mom back in the day. Yeah. And now we got to this point. He was like, oh, you, my father ain't good enough for you? Yeah, well, he was good enough for my mom. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, he before he left the room, he... He did he, hug her. He ran and gave her that hug and said that he loved her. And I thought that was, that was, that kind of wiped away what he said to her for me. Um. Then they had the thing where he told her, you know, I'm going to Paris with my dad. He needs me. He's my hero. And he was like, well, it's not that simple. We got to talk about it. She, he was like, don't make me go back to court. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, the fact that he brought that up. Right. <laughs> I, I love the when he said Thomas or um, his dad was his hero. I thought that was so sweet. Oh man, I love that. I was like, wow. Wow. I'm also glad that they had Douglas insist on going with it. Like he said himself, I want to go with my dad. Mm hmm. Um, because it that way it doesn't turn into a Thomas is trying to take Douglas from me and forcing him to go to, to Paris and it's they clearly show Douglas saying that he wants to go. Yeah, well Douglas heads upstairs too. <laughs> and Brooke was like, "Oh, honey, you, you, is you, is you? It can't be that simple." He was like, "I oh, hope I already know I'm going." And what? <laughs> <laughs> he did kind of cut Brooke off, didn't he? Yeah, and Brooke was looking like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> did I just get told to shut up by <laughs> this little child? That was that was pretty funny. Yeah, it was. She's not Grandma Brooke no more. But did you all see the look on Brooke's face when Ridge was like, well, I'm going to miss you. <laughs> yeah, you, you got a plan? Well, you know, and they all hugged up. Brooke was standing at that door by herself looking like, wow. She couldn't believe it. That they both her and her daughter just got hit with the coup de grace. I loved it. I absolutely I, I, loved it. <laughs> oh, man. And then Thomas walked out and said, Bye, Brooke. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, know, you know what? You know what else happened in that scene before Thomas walked out? Mm. It happened when Steffi, you know, was starting her reign again about hope. And, and Thomas stopped her and said, Um, you know, I, I appreciate you looking out for me, but I don't, I don't need you talking about hope like that. So him, him doing that to me again, like reiterates, Steffi is not pulling the strings because yeah, because he's still defending hope right now. Right. Even though he's upset, he just broke up with her. He's still defending her. So you're not going to defend somebody like that when if you've been manipulated to believe that. You know, she's never going to love you or commit that's to you or whatever. Right. That makes sense. Point. Yeah, that's all. Like, that's what he feels in his mind. It's not because Steffi said whatever he, she said to him. Right. That's a good point, Keish. Good point. Um, we can't forget about Hope being by herself down in that room, which is that bottom picture right there. Oh, my God. 
that screw when she threw that ring and necklace and screamed and was like clenching her fists in that raw kind of half fetal position crouching i was like oh man i feel it through the screen that was hard. i'm just surprised she threw that ring i mean what we would normally see in shows like this is that they'll see this ring and like dang i ain't gonna let this man go i'm out of here she got mad and threw that ring across the room i'm like that ring gotta be worth like maybe about twenty thousand dollars you know what i'm saying at least. at least if a forester you know that's a billion dollar family she took that ring, threw it across that room. What What do you think was the significance of throwing the ring, though? I, th I think maybe she just feels like that was the downfall of their relationship. Okay. Him proposing to her. And it's maybe when she looked at it, it, she got frustrated because it's like we were doing fine until he did this. I think it's a, I think it's a little different for me i feel like she looks at that ring and she's probably frustrated herself that she can't commit mm. and give him that full commitment mm -hmm. so she she's frustrated that she is not able to have that family because she cannot commit the way that she would like to for them mm. yeah i don't know i love that scene i'm like that's what you get it was I. I, went to so back, I watched it three times. <laughs> I did too, uh, Trish. Listen, I was just like chickens coming home. I even posted this picture on the community tab, and I think I said this is. Let me pull that up, and I, I'm trying to remember. And a lot of people responded to it. Hold on one second. I'm gonna pull this. Okay, here it is. I said the look that you have when you realize that what you thought was locked in is your selfishness screwed it up. <laughs> That's why you be getting blocked. <laughs> shut, <laughs> shut up, Keish. Well, at least it's on my platform. You can't block myself. There you go. <laughs> it's good to be the right, the, uh, the, 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 the runner, uh, owner of the platform. There you go, man. Listen. Like she can say. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Trish. I love it. I love it. Hey, can you uh are you over it? you you having a little sip, Trish? No, no, just I swear y'all just put our pepper. Uh-huh. Okay. Sugared up. All right. <laughs> I I ain't gotta check you like they gotta check Nikki, right? No, just kidding. But um yeah, I that I mean, I got to say Annika acted that scene out mm -hmm. very well. So good. It was off the charts. Yeah. yeah but agree. but at the same time, I'm like, mm, mm, well, you know. Yeah. You now you started out with an awakening and then you ended up with a rude awakening, so. Oh my gosh, that's so true. <laughs> what happened, Bree? So, ooh. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. I was like, that was very nice. That yeah, was back on, what was that? The, 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 what'd you say? Perfect way to put it. Hey, that July 10th week where she had four days of, uh, of bedroom time with Thomas and getting all scratched and bitten up. Yeah. Yeah, she had, I had an awakening. Well, you got a rude one nine months later. <laughs> I'll never forget that thing. You have awakened something in me, Thomas. I have never felt like this before. I was like, oh, man. Liam's not going to want to ever find that out. I mean, dude. Well, he's already found it out. He's, he was hiding in the bushes. <laughs> you, are, you are correct. <laughs> oh, no. He got a taste of that when he slept with, with, uh, with um, Hope. When Hope was fantasizing about Thomas, because he went to Bill and Wyatt and was like, you know, our sex life has been really great. It had been this way in a very long time. <laughs> so he got a, 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 he was the recipient of what she thought that she would be doing to Thomas, which obviously she got a chance to do. She did. That was, that was some hot stuff, too. 
Yeah. Yeah, now Liam realized, like, wait a minute, let me think back. Oh, that's why. Ew. Yep. <laughs> uh, it sucks because Thope was, uh, everybody was looking forward to it. A lot of people don't think it's over. I don't know. I can't answer that. I don't know if Thomas is coming back anytime soon. Maybe he'll pull a, um, like you say, a Thorsten where he would be gone and come back in July or something. I don't know. With the ponytail and everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> both working, working with the FBI and it served no purpose. All right. They're at an ashram. You know what? And Bree and I talked about this on Wednesday. What if? And I think Bree was the one that brought it up. What if she come back? What if she finds out after Thomas leaves that she's pregnant? I hope that doesn't happen. Oh, really, Keish? Okay, why not? No, because I don't want them to have. I don't want them to. I don't want it to be like that. Like okay. When they, when they have kids, I want it to be because it's planned and it's not. It's not something that happened during a breakup that will, you know, I guess, put them back together. Like, when, when they get together, I want them to get together or, organically because they want to be together, not because there's other factors involved that, oh, okay, to where they think it's a good idea. But the baby yeah, that makes sense. Together. Right. Yeah. They would just be together because of the baby instead of being together because they really, truly want to be. Right. Gotcha. That makes sense. That makes sense. Oh, my goodness. Now, we got to talk about what happened today. And I'm going to put this big old picture on the screen. She thought that she was going to slap Steffi. <laughs> she didn't think she was about to. Steffi's quick. she got reflexes. Listen, Steffi dug deep. She was hurling all types of insults at that girl. Do you think that was overkill? Thomas is gone now. You know what? I was very disappointed at Hope. Here is the moment, if anything, to really go at Steffi um, and, and, and say, like, look, you're the same woman who put me in a gondola. You're the same woman who was he had no problem sneaking off with Liam while I was with him. You had no problem conniving any chance you get. You, you worked through the whole entire Spencer family. Like, there should have been a whole lot more anger in that attempt at a slap. But that slap was on dial-up, unfortunately. That is so funny. You know, if she would have brought that up, quite frankly, the only one Hope hasn't been with is Bill. And Hope slept with Liam when Liam was had a wife at home with a baby. So, you know, if you're going to spew that, you better be ready to have it hurled right back at you. I mean, these two have so much ammunition against one another. <laughs> exactly. It's like, it's, it's just, uh, it's, it's a show. I mean... It, it is something else altogether. I mean, I I I enjoyed the exchange because it just it felt like classic soap opera drama. Yes. And we have seen this film go back and forth like that in a, a, in a long, long time. time. Yep. So yes. I, I enjoyed it. Um, I, I I did expect Hope to to come back a little harder than what she did, but I I think Steffi's insults are also kind of they were weak i mean she was basically calling calling hope a slut the whole time and saying that you're like your mom and i'm so tired of steffi using the 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 whole right. vendetta thing in her insults because it's, it's getting old at this point i mean she's already the, the last time she said you're like your mother she basically embraced it and said maybe i am now what well she's you know? being her grandmother because stephanie used to do that all the time Exactly, and that well, and that's what Hope said today. Are you trying to be like? Are you trying to be like Steph? And she said, "Maybe I am." <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's a namesake, so. Somebody posted a video on I think I can't remember if it was, I was on Facebook or Instagram, <laughs> and it was it was a split screen of of their their argument today mm -hmm. when she tried to when she attempted to slap Steffi and Steffi caught her arm. And the other video was a video of Stephanie and Brooke arguing and, and 
Brooke tried to slap Stephanie and Stephanie caught her arm. Oh, wow. So, oh, I wonder if they're going to have Steffi bring in security and cancel hope for the future and throw hope in a trash can and wheel her out. You know what? That's a good question. Oh, remember when That's Stephanie cool. did that? that group? Yes, I do remember that. But, but that, that does lead us to another question. Who, her lead designer is gone. What happens to Hope for the Future? RJ. Uh, RJ or Zenday. Can, can it go away? Can we do something different now? Because that whole virtue signaling stuff, she's a little old for that now. Right. Is there something else we can do? But I thought they kind of changed up her clothing. It wasn't so Little House on the Prairie anymore. Yeah, she used to have the boho. It was like the boho vibe of her line when it first started. Oh, the, yeah, the tablecloths and the curtains. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, yes. And yeah, and it looked like they switched it up to like more elegant kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, it'd be awesome if she were to get rid of Hope for the Future because she said that. Thomas was the only person who got her vision anyway, so mm -hmm. Eric, Zenday, and, and RJ wouldn't be able to do that. What if she were to recreate her mom's bedroom line? That would be interesting. Yeah, I mean, Steffi did it. Yes, she did it. That's true. Uh, these two going to be... This, is, this ain't over. This is probably going to oh, spill oh, into... Oh, no. Yeah, this whole feud, now that Thomas is gone, technically she's single. Solo dolo, no man, no nothing, meaning hope. Who's she coming after? Oh, Finn yeah. or Liam? Oh, she's going after Finn. She already showed that thigh meat. She already <laughs> gave him a shoulder to cry on. She's going to need his yep. nice, new muscular showed her to cry. Oh, well. going to use the death of his mother to rag on Stephanie, how Stephanie's not being supportive or understanding. And if you need anything, I'm here for you. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Well, you know what? Both of you all are absolutely correct because the spoilers are out for next week. And, uh, yeah. It looks like, um, <laughs> Yeah, they're going to be bonding over some things next week. Hope and um, Finn. And I think that's going to be on Friday the 5th. Yeah, isn't that the Sheila's memorial service or something? Yeah, and then Steffi and Liam are not going to be happy about the two of them either. You know, how do you go somewhere like that when the person literally shot you, shot your wife, and left you both for dead? Like, I'm sorry. I still just can't get past how you, in, how do you, no. no it's a no for me. I'm, I'm with you, Trish. I, I will never understand that logic. Mm -hmm. But I do, so here's what I think um, might happen. I don't think that Hope is going to, like, actually try to do anything with Finn. I think she might try to do something to make it, to make Steffi insecure about their friendship. Um, like, I think she's purposely going to, I feel like she's going to over exaggerate their friendship. And she is going to, she's going to volunteer to, to like be there, like, like you guys were saying, she's going to volunteer to be there for Finn because, you know, she doesn't feel like Steffi is supporting him enough. I think she's also, I think she will possibly, try to like put a, a bug in Finn's ear about Liam and about how she doesn't think that Steffi is over her feelings for Liam because in their argument who did she bring up mm -hmm. she brought up not that she was you know I, I, didn't, I didn't feel like she was um harping on how she broke them up but just the simple fact that she is thinking about him and how Hope cheated on him and what she did to him. That's like, why do you care, Stephanie? After what that man has done to you, why do you care? So I wonder if she's going to, if she's going to possibly like say something to Finn about Liam and about how Liam is still in love with Steffi and you might want to watch out for Steffi because she can never resist him or something like that. Mm. Get Liam all in, or not Liam, get, get Finn all insecure. Um, and try to put, you know, a wedge between them that way. 
because it wouldn't it wouldn't make any sense to me that in a matter of a few weeks when Finn has showed no interest that way in Hope mm-hmm. that if Hope even tried to like come on to him in some way or seduce him that he would fall for it. It would be different had they shown them um, like building up their friendship and there wasn't these long breaks in between like times when they when they shared scenes um, and, and there was like some possible flirtiness or something like that that happened. Mm-hmm. We didn't even see that when they were both at Deacon's house and you gave them a hug. It mm-hmm. was like hugged mm-hmm. and then they immediately went back to their sides of the couch and yeah, there there's zero chemistry. chemistry. Yeah, I don't see any so, chemistry there at all. Yeah, there's there's definitely no chemistry, but, you know, they could still try to do that if they wanted to. But I, I don't even see what the characters, like them, um, even hinting towards one another being attracted to, to, to the other. No. And imagine that Hope would turn that around in a matter of a few weeks and do something to get Finn to, to want to cheat on Stephanie. So I I think it's just going to be some mind games or something like that. Well, well, that will still be interesting because that's, you know, that's this drama leading off of, because it's obviously Hope is thinking this is all Steffi's fault. She's not taking the account of what Thomas wants and how this ain't going to work and how she wore that ring and really wasn't going to do anything and, you know. She's like, this is you. You poisoned him against me. Girl, come on. Yeah, she said you ruined, you, you you split my family in two and you poisoned him against me. And I, I'm like, I, I don't know how you're coming to that conclusion in less than like five hours. And you know she <laughs> talked out the side of her neck again later in today's episode when she was like, you know, I probably would have married him one day. And I'm like. Well, why you didn't say that on Wednesday? Thomas specifically asked you, can you see yourself having that commitment? You saying, I didn't, I can't answer that. Don't say it now after he's gone and you in a whole argument with his sister. Yeah. But she could have kept that to herself. It doesn't matter. He, he, he's off to Paris. Right, he's gone. What is, what is Steffi going to do with that? Nothing. That's what I'm like. She was all over the place. It was her. Uh, I just got out of a marriage, and then I don't. You know, this whole thing with Steffi. It was pointing fingers. She was listing off a lot of stuff. She even brought up the stuff that I had to get over with Thomas did, and I had to right. You know, learn about myself, and I had to pass the issues with my family. Like it was a whole lot of nothing. And this man asked clear and concise questions for her yep and she deflected you know what i one what i didn't like was when she told steffi um your brother did xyz to me in the past and i forgave him i i was willing to give him another chance or i gave him another chance and it was like was, i didn't like her tone of voice when she said it as if she was doing thomas a favor, favor. yep he need to be I grateful to be with me because hey yeah. Yeah. That's how that felt. Yep. That's how that felt. It was like she was saying he should be grateful that I was willing to give him another chance. Yep. Yep. And I'm like, you had to beg this man for one to save your line, and secondly, you stepped outside of your marriage by choice for that said man. Right. That you complaining about still mourning over a marriage. Like I said earlier, you're mourning over a marriage that you left to be yep. with him. Yep. So she can miss me with that one. Um. Okay. I think we covered everything. Did y'all get it all out? Cause I know it was a lot to unpack with that one. It was a, a good classic, dramatic, drama filled week. Yes, it, it was. was. I it was thoroughly. Even even though I can't stand the character of Brooke, I still enjoyed the the drama that she added to it with her. Obvious mm-hmm. hypocrisy. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I can't wait to see what's going to happen because people are speculating that Thomas is going to come back with Ivy. Mm-hmm. Or, or come back with a, a new woman in general, which, I mean, we know that's just going to be a plot device to 
to make Hope jealous. So not not saying that Thomas is doing it to make Hope jealous, but to make Hope, I guess, maybe think about what she is, what she's losing right now because you know she won't commit or whatever. Which I don't necessarily like because I don't want them to. I don't. I just I don't want Hope to feel forced into committing when she's not ready. But I also don't want Thomas to feel like he's he's got to stay in this relationship without getting what he wants because she can't commit. Right. I don't want like this this extra one or this other woman to to make it feel like they're they don't have a choice or she doesn't have a choice. She has to commit to Thomas in order to get this woman out of his life. Or, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. All right. Here for the dramas. Y'all got um, Trish, Bree, y'all got it all out? Yeah, we got that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, this was really a lot of fun. I, I missed and missed you guys, and it's been a blast. All right. Well, we ain't quite done yet because we got Flip the Script. Taking several seats, star of the week, pickle of the week. I know that sound. I know you weren't on the pickle one, so I know that sounds <laughs> funny. You already put somebody in the corner with a pickle. I did, didn't I? Yes, you did. I took my turn. All right. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> You're so funny, <laughs> Tris. Um. Okay. So for those that are new here. Uh, our um, flip the script segment is that if there's a particular scene or storyline that you wish you could change, this is where you flip the script. So for the young and the restless, what y'all got? I, um, although I enjoyed Ashley as a little teenager on the couch, I actually wish that other personality came out to cuss out her brother. Oh, <laughs> dang. Okay. That would have been funny, especially when she was watching her, binge watching her sitcoms. Yes. I wanted to be like, why are you bothering me? Where is your, where is your raggedy wife at? Where is your <laughs> felon wife? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, girl, you crazy. What else? Who Who's next with their flip? Ooh, I still got to think of one. You got one, Trish? Uh... Yeah, I mean, I wish that Lily would have taken Billy's advice and that now, you know, just I always think that in in soap operas, not in real life, but in soap operas, petty little fights in the office are just so entertaining. Mm -hmm. You know, making someone's life that living hell in an office setting because they did you wrong. I mean, in real life, it'd be so cool if someone did something bad to you to be able to get even with them. But you can't do that because you can't do that. But in the soap operas, it's so fun to watch that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. That's cool. All right. Um, my flip would have just uh, for Adam and Chelsea to find, take all that money that they got or go talk to Victor and bring somebody, the best one in the world, Y'all don't have access to just Maryland. Y'all got access to the entire globe. Doctors, specialists, whatever. Bring that doctor here to Genoa City so that you can be around your child and not see them every weekend while he's struggling with OCD. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Yep. Bree, you, you got yours in, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Here's a personality. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right, bold flip. Who? My only flip for this whole week that instead of Steffi, I wish it was Taylor in the, every one of those scenes, interacting with Thomas, interacting with Brooke and Ridge, and interacting with Hope. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. Who's next? Trish can go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, mm, oh, wow. Okay. Uh, you know, I think, um, gosh, you guys, this is a really hard one because these scenes, I think, were all really, really good. Uh, well, I'll go. Thank you. Sorry, I'm like <laughs> Luna should have told Zenday to turn around and walk right back out that door. 
But RJ ain't here. You can't be walking up in this man's house unannounced. I agree. Asking me to be in a relationship with you. You in you in your cousin's house trying to get his girl to be with you. And this is the second time that he's asked her since the incident. <sighs> yes. It's a lot. He's asked a lot. <laughs> Zenday, go home, Zenday. He's like, go home, Roger. Go home, Zenday. <laughs> um, my flip would have been, I would have, I didn't like how Steffi was smirking um, when Thomas walked in the office and, and told her and Ridge that things were over with, with um, Hope, because... I don't know, like, I get that she she feels like her brother is better off without hope in his life romantically, but he's still heartbroken. So I, I just didn't like that she was standing in there smirking about it. Mm -hmm. and I, I just would have liked to have seen her be a little more, I guess, empathetic towards her brother mm. uh, instead of celebrating because, you know. She can't stand hope, brother. yeah. Yeah, like, it's more, I feel like it's more about her hating Hope than than being there for Thomas. Right. I, guess I, I don't like that. Yeah, it did tip, didn't it? Mm-hmm. All right, everybody's done with their flip? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, dokie. Okay. All right, who's taking seats on The Young and the Restless? Billy. Billy? Really? <laughs> Yeah, I don't like that he is so involved in the, the Connor thing. Oh, yeah. Okay, gotcha. I, I well, that's know. Chelsea's fault. Yeah, but Billy himself can say, you know what, Chelsea, this is between you and, and Adam. Yeah, that's true. I, you know, I know you want my opinion, but you you two really need to talk about this. And and like Adam said, get a, a, a second opinion from a professional. <laughs> like, Mm-hmm. But he, I feel like Billy always has the, he feels like he's got to be in the middle of everything. Like, you have your own kids to worry about. Right. Who just found out they have a, a big sister and whose house just burned down. Gotcha. Okay. Who who else? Bree, who you got taking seats? I got Jack and I got Devon taking seats. Uh, Jack, he, he's ignoring, well, he's just leaving his sister hanging, basically, to be Nikki's second husband. Mm -hmm. And then you got Devon, who is enabling all the women around him, especially his sister, and leading off of emotion, per usual, going five years running. Mm -hmm. <laughs> five years. Now, didn't, didn't Devon end up changing his mind about firing... Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. He got, after Billy put something on the table, you know, his face was like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I think Billy's I right. away from Chancellor Winter, so, or Chancellor so bad, I'm so sick of Billy. Mm-hmm, mm, -hmm, mm -hmm. What you got, Trish? Well, let's see. I think, so y'all had really good ones, and the two that I'll add are going to be Diane and Kyle. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. They need to take seats, like, knee to knee. Face to face, and work it out. Work it out. Work it out because first of all, dude, it was your idea. Second of all, chick, you knew you were not qualified, and you took it anyway. Mm -hmm. So you guys need to work it out. Mhm. Mm gotcha. Um, I would say Lily need to take a seat. She need to cool off. And make better decisions, don't you know? Because you about to had a whole company sued. Um, and then Phyllis need to take a seat and stop playing with fire alarms. Oh, about her. <laughs> I mean, really, that's something that you do. Some kids be, you know, pulling high school and stuff. Like, girl, no, over Danny and Cricket, and stop <laughs> listening at people doors too. Over mediocre eggs, cause. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> she said mediocre. Well, I mean, you know, there were no fireworks. Of course not. It was awkward. Oh, it was, it was slow motion. <laughs> and it wasn't. Who was that? Um, what's that art of slow motion for you? It wasn't that. Oh, uh, it was um, juvenile. Yeah, it wasn't that type of slow motion either. 
<laughs> All right. Now, who's taking some seats on the bold and the beautiful? And I'm going to go first. I need to put Hope in a seat while she's screaming. You're going to sit there and think about what you did, sweetie. <laughs> ma'am. 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 Yes, you're going to think about it. And Brooke, trying to be fake. Trying to be fake. That's who my seat is going to, is, is Brooke. The fakest one on the show this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was going to give it to Zenday and Hope. Because Zenday, why? Why? Leave that girl alone. And Hope's pride. I should give it to Hope's pride because she missed out on a very fine man who was giving it to her like she wanted and was fully committed to her and she still chose her pride in the end. <laughs> sure. She gonna go home and take a seat on that empty cold bed by herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. Cold and dry. <laughs> 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 On that note, I think I'll just uh, make the ring take a seat in a box on a dresser. <laughs> <laughs> that poor ring got bashed. Uh, yeah, it did. She threw that ring so hard across that room. I'm like, girl, wait a minute. Give it to me. Right. No, I know. I can sell it. Give it here. Give it here. <laughs> Listen. I flinched at it like, I hope that diamond survives. Right. It will. <laughs> Listen, girl, oh, well. shoot. Take that thing, cash it in, and put the money in my bank. What's wrong with you? You know it. You can throw that how, ring how, if you want to. How long How long do you guys think that folk are going to be broken up? It depends. I need to know what's happening with Matt Atkinson. That's what I need to right. know. Right. I have no clue what to even guess. I mean, or, or are they going to recast him? Is he just done with the role and they'll bring Thomas back later? Because the way he said it, he was like, I don't know when I'm coming back. I I, I guess I've never had any doubt that he was just taking vacation. Same. I, I didn't realize there was even a thought that he might not come back until we start talking about it tonight. I mean, it just seems so final. You quit the line. You tell everybody, and you're taking him with you, meaning Douglas. So are they ending that character too, for right now? I doubt it, because he. I mean, Douglas is rarely on screen anyway. The last time we saw him was the Parent Trap dinner, right? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I guess it depends on you know how long Thomas is going to be uh, you know gone is he gone gone is he taking a break or what you know? I don't think he's going anywhere I'm, I'm hoping that he just took uh, is taking a vacation like Thorsten did yeah girl like three months without Thomas though sheesh I'm, I'm hoping I don't know I'm hoping that we'll see him here and there throughout his break um I don't know maybe on a FaceTime call or something like that. I, but I feel like I don't think they're going to be broken up any longer. I give it three months. I think they'll be back together at least in th by three months. So what if they end up putting hope with Finn? I don't think they're going to do that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't. I I still don't think that whatever karma Steffi has coming is going to be her sleeping with Finn. Like I. I Finn is way too much in love with Steffi to fall out of love with her and get into a situation with Hope in a matter of three months. Well, and I think, too, Keish, what you said earlier with regard to how that storyline could play out, you know, you could very easily see Steffi buying into the fact that they're super close and getting insecure and running to Liam and they watch a Bob Hope movie and they drink too much and they wind up in the sack. Yeah, right. It winds up blowing up in her face. Yeah. Because, you know, it always has to be because of Steffi, right? Yeah. Well, That's I mean, the, the bonding that they're having next week, obviously, is her feeling the loss of Thomas, which uh, I don't know how Finn is going to react to that because he didn't want he's, her, her he's with him. over his dead body, right? Right. And then his loss of Sheila, which she's the only one that understands that. So... I don't know. I, I just, I'm curious to see what happens now. It's expected.
the unexpected because I was not expecting Thomas to say any of this stuff. This yeah. Week. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if they did Hope and Finn as a hookup, only because they're they're the way that they're writing. It seems like they're kind of excited for the stuff that they're rolling out because this was a gobsmack. Yeah, it was, and Douglas too. I didn't expect Douglas to, to say what he said too. It was like wow. Yeah, that was, I was more surprised by Douglas than I was Thomas. Well, you know what? what? Oh, I'm what sorry. What if Hope and Finn do wind up getting super close and after the service in a week or two, do wind up having a fling and she's pregnant? And then is it Finn's or is it Thomas's? Oh, no. I don't see any of that happening. I mean, I mean anything's I possible. I don't know. Finn is, still, Finn is Luna's daddy. Hope oh, Luna's yeah. Daddy. We got that storyline, that oh, paternity okay. thing. That ain't happening either. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I, I don't see a, who's the baby daddy storyline. The only way that that would happen with Finn and Hope, I think, is if they were both just completely drunk out of their minds. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We definitely will see. And I guess we'll just have to keep an eye out to see what type of Thomas sightings we will or will not have over the next yeah. several weeks or months of, you know, whatever. So, um, what? Finn and Hope is not happening. In Annika's IG live chat, her response to Finn and Hope made it clear to me that it wasn't happening. She did a live. I know Keish, did she do a live? Did you see Annika do a live? She did. I can't remember if that was yesterday or the day before. She did do a live. I didn't, you didn't, I didn't watch it though because I couldn't listen. Oh um, man, I missed it. Shoot. But people, uh, people have posted um, her video on there, and I think I haven't watched it. But in somebody's post, they said that she said something like, "Are you guys shipping? Are you agenda shipping, or do you truly want fit and hope together, or something like that?" And she kind of, they were, the way they were describing it was like she was being, I guess, sarcastic. Like, that's not happening. Kind of like how Tanner did in his yeah. line. Yeah, okay. When they asked about him, and he was like, uh, I think Hope is. If, if you it. find it, can you send it to me? I want to kind of analyze it. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll go, maybe she saved it on her IG because you can save lives. But I don't know. I'll go check her IG and then, you know, if you get it before I find it, shoot it over to me if you can. Will do. All right. So, um, everybody took their seats for bowl? Yep. Yep. Okay. Star of the week for the young and the restless. Ashley. Yeah. Eileen Davidson. I got to give it to her again. Yep. Amazing. I think both she and uh, Melanie Thomas Scott. Oh, okay. With the scenes at the meeting and everything, she was intense. Oh, yeah. She was really emotional about all of that. Yeah. What you got, Keish? Uh, well, I'm going to go a little different. I'm going to give it to my girl, Lily, for being petty. Oh, you've been talking about <laughs> Lily. Listen, chat... <laughs> Chat, listen, Keisha's been talking about enjoying Lily being petty all week. <laughs> I, I have thoroughly enjoyed her being petty because we never get to see her do it. And I want to see it happen more. Okay. All right, star of the week on Bold. Annika. Yeah, Annika for sure. And Matt, actually. We got to see a very a, a clear, like a, a clear-headed Thomas. I'm so glad he didn't slip into the way. But Matt and Annika, amazing job. And actually, I'll give Douglas. it to little Douglas. Yeah, I was going to say Douglas because I mean, oof. he's mm. such a good little actor. So good. Mm-hmm. So basically, a dope family. <laughs> yeah. Yep, the dope family gets it. All right, pickle, pickle, pickle. So the pickle for me is Phyllis because she is too overly grown to be this childish. <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't, I, I give the pickles 
to the writers who gave her this storyline. It sucks. It just storyline's been sucking for the last three years. I know, I know. It's like, come on. I mean, at least she did a little bit better when she owned the Grand Phoenix, and then she turned around and sold it. I'm like, gosh. Yeah. All right, and then, oh, did everybody do their pickle? Go ahead, Trish. Um, I'm gonna give my pickle to Diane. Oh, for of course you are. You know. <laughs> can I go first for B and B? Sure. Uh oh. <laughs> I have my reasons. Okay, go ahead, Trish, for bold. So I mean, with such a huge loss in Thomas leaving, I'm gonna give Hope the pickle. Ding. Really? Okay. <laughs> So wait a minute, she got the star of the week and the pickle of the week. <laughs> She's gonna need that pickle. Oh my god, yeah, she oh wait a minute. Wait, hold on. Did you catch what Trish said? Yeah. Everybody caught it. She gonna need that, huh? Okay. All right, Trish. Um, I'm gonna get that pickle to Zenday this week. Dude, no. Nope. Let the dust settle. Take a step back. Mm -mm. Yeah, you doing too much. You doing too much. All right, everybody got theirs in. You got yours, Breezy. Who did you say? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, who, Lord Child? We've been on three hours. I figured it was gonna be that long because it was a lot on the Young and the Restless. They have multiple storylines, and then Bold. It was just an intense week in I itself. It. Yeah. It was a five layer burrito. Yes, yeah, five layer. It was nothing but layers. You had Brooks Faithness, you had Steffi, you had Thomas putting his big boy pants on, Douglas stepping up as a man, and Hope just sad. <laughs> Hope just <laughs> sad. Oh my goodness. All right, and you guys, listen, I know y'all got a thousand comments in there. we probably be on for another half an hour, an hour. I usually out, you know, call out a couple of them. Like, Kay didn't have any pickles on bowl, but, you know, she didn't watch the Zenday and Luna mess is what she said. You know what my pickle is? Huh? That they didn't let Hope and Steffi get into a physical altercation. Oh, you I wanted a whole fight. I needed a, yeah, I needed a fist fight between the two of them. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted them to duke it out, huh? I did, yes. Oh, Lord. So you wanted Lily to be petty, and you wanted a whole fight over on Bo. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy, 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 quiche. <laughs> All right. Y'all got anything else? No. No, not today. All right, so um, as I said, make sure you guys hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Um, again, I dropped a link earlier to join the Facebook group if you want to. There are spoilers over there for the both shows. There are um, There's the um, blog post for the Monday episode. And then you can follow us on, tw on Twitter, X, or TikTok. Uh, IG threads, all that good stuff, and then also on Rumble. So, all right, ladies, it was a good one. It was. Have a great weekend. Glad to have you back. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Also, um, I did see it in the chat. Um, there was a passing. Um, the actor. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw it. And sending condolences to his family. What was his name? Louis Gossett. Louis Gossett Jr. Uh, yeah, he passed uh, away last uh, night, I think it was. He was 87 years old, too. Wow. Oh, I didn't... my gosh. What yep. a great long life. And then on a good note, I want to send a huge congratulations to Rednacks. So for those that know who Rednax is in our comments, she or he, I don't know which one it is, they're getting married coming up very soon. Congratulations. Yeah, so um she's gonna they are gonna be taking a break. Um 
and say that they'll see us again back in May because the month of April is dedicated to the wedding. Cool. But yeah, between D. Spencer and Rednacks, they really keep the comment section going during the week. So I got to give the shout outs there. Shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for supporting um, Trish, Bree, you know, Keish, of course, J Money monitoring the chat. And then um, the one, and I got to say Delmonica, they have been really keeping up the content in the Facebook group. So I really appreciate all of that as well. Keep up the good work and what you're doing. So I wanted to give you your flowers and kudos for that over there. Because you didn't have to do that. So I really appreciate that over there. All right, you guys. Until next week, we'll see you guys soon. Bye. 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 Bye.